Here you go. Well, that's good. I told you, right? Yep. All right. All right. Okay, quiet, quiet, quiet. Quiet. What, what happens? It's... Why, why do I have to be quiet? Shh. Because we're not on the right. I got to get on the right screen. We're not even on the right screen yet. Oh. 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 Well, how does quiet help that? Okay, quiet. It's going to come on. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're on. Okay, shh. You're not on, but you're on. I got to wait till the screen shows. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Shh, 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 shh. We're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> quiet, quiet, quiet. Why do people have to be quiet? Because this is a studio. You don't talk in a studio. Oh. Until you're ready to go live. Are you nuts? <laughs> Man, is this your first time in a job? <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Live from YouTubeville in Houston, Texas, is Learn to Paint Tuesdays with Ginger Cook and Sammy. Whoa, Sammy. Looks like you got your eye patch on the other eye. Must have done the second eye, huh? Sam hey, yeah. Ginger. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, Sammy's got his eye patch on in sympathy for me. So those of you who don't know, I got my second eye uh, operated on cataract surgery. This is the... You know, back when I was a kid, somebody was in a hospital for like weeks to do this or something. It was a big deal. And now apparently this is fairly commonplace when you get to be a certain age. We've been talking about that certain age. We don't know what that age is. But when you're a certain age, about the time you start seeing rainbows around the moon and it's not, um, it's not some sort of artistic gift and someone points that out, like, you know, who, then you go see the eye doctor whoa, 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 and he whoa, whoa, suggests... What, what do you mean who? Who's the who in this case? You. Oh... Well, anyway, so I we went see. to the eye doctor, and he too agreed with John that it wasn't some sort of artistic gift that some of us could see more colors than others. There were not to meant to be any rainbows around the moon. But I think that would be a good title for a song, don't you? Rainbows, rainbows around the moon. Oh, yeah. Rainbows around the moon, and, you know, yeah. we see things differently than you, and you make me want to swoon. I don't know, something. But anyway, it, it could be a thing, right? So anyway, um, if you're new to our channel, it's just, uh, we're doing, we do acrylic painting here. If you just happen to stumble across us. <laughs> stumble we're across us. Well, people do. I mean, there's a thing live. What's that? You know, and then they say, who is this woman with the weird glasses? So we're going to let a few people catch up. We've had kind of an exciting day with our website. So uh, first off, I want to tell everybody that if you have not subscribed to us and you want to be able to find out more about us and you want to know when we're doing these live things, You've got to subscribe, and then there's this little bell underneath the subscribe button. This is for anybody that goes live, by the way, just your video chat people, uh, you know, your gamers, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, you got to hit that bell on each channel so that it doesn't do it too good on, hit it on someone else's channel. You'll just know when they're live. You won't know when I'm live. How's that? So. And we're more important. No, well, John, we're not, but it's just, hey, you know. Hey, 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 we are. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, that's. That sounds very rude. Oh, okay. We love all YouTubers. Without them, none of us would be doing our job. Oh, yeah, on YouTube, because, I mean, they let us, you know, they let us broadcast this for free, and believe me, this is a big deal, because we just got hit for $160 today, because, um, um, uh, you know, nobody puts a website up w uh, for free. You just, you obviously, if you've ever done a website, you have to pay for it, but then sometimes some websites cost more than the others, and the more you stuff you put on them, the more information that's on them, the more money they want to operate the website. And we noticed today that our website went a little crazy, gingercooklive.gallery, and um, uh, we called the support people and they said, by the way, <laughs> you have got an awful lot of people popping over to your website and the search engines are going crazy and you've increased your traffic by a lot and you need to upgrade. If you want to ever, it's like being held blackmail. If you ever want to see your server again, you know, they couldn't have pointed a gun to your head and said, you ever want to see this again? You know, of course, it's up to you. Of course, if you want us to turn it back on, you'll upgrade now. I mean, where was the two weeks notice, something like this? I don't know. But anyway. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? I mean, I'm well, just Well, we knew saying. we wanted to do it, but we weren't quite ready well, right now. Well, I wasn't going to do it at two in the afternoon. I was no, going to do it do at two in the morning. That, yeah, that's when I usually do and it. And then they said it would be up in three hours and a pig's eye. I'm sorry. Did, did well, you, which three hours? They didn't specify which three hours. They just said three hours. Yeah, okay. But, you know, and I'm telling you what, it's just, uh, John and I had a discussion about this at dinner, you know, <laughs> and he's so calm, and I'm just really, at this point, those of you guys that know me, you know, that this, you know, I'm really good until it comes to tech stuff, and then I just want to throw things up in the air, right? Right. Ah! <laughs> just, just, just. And where does that get you doing that? Nowhere. 
<laughs> no. Nowhere at all. Well, I guess you could say that, but you know, there's some sort of, it's like a release valve on a tank that sort of explodes. You have to kind of yell a little bit to have it release, otherwise it's going to do, you know, not be good. Didn't your mother teach you that? Sometimes, my mother, when I was a kid, got me a Bozo the Clown blow up. Oh, I remember bag. those. You punch him in the nose and he rocks back and forth. Yeah, and so she said, whenever you're mad at me, you know, just punch this bag. It didn't last a day. <laughs> <laughs> but then I said, oh, it had a hole in it. You know, yeah, right. So anyway, uh, that was sort of an idea that came and went, right? But um, anyway, so I'm just saying, you know, that's kind of funny. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about, this is great, we want to talk about that and we want to talk to you about the fact that um, we're going to tell you some stuff, but you're going to go, yeah, 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 lady, but what are you painting? You know, let's get real here. <laughs> we're, you know, we're going to paint another barn, not the barn I showed you on YouTube, uh, Facebook tonight, those of you who, thanks for the great titles, by the way, I'm going to use one of those titles for this picture, ha, ha, ha. But um, <laughs> we're going to be, I, I look, what happens to most artists is they thumb through National Geographic or, you know, the Pinterest or somewhere and they fire, they, they're driving in the car and they're taking photos like crazy and they decide to paint something. So I'm going to show you how to take a photo and turn it into a painting. Now, I want you to never painted this painting before. You and I are going to do it together. You're going to see here my mind going tick, 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 tick. Well, maybe not that, but you're going to, you know, you're going to understand the process because I want to share the process, not just how to paint it, but the process. All right. So let's, let me just scoot down here to our table. Now, uh, this came up because I was working on this painting all day long, all right? And this has got, you know, bar and I thought, you know, this is a little bit more elaborate. This will probably be for our members at gingercooklive.gallery. And it, listen, don't panic if you're not a member. Memberships, you know, one week for, you know, $9.95. And there's over 270 lessons. But there's a lot of different barns. And then the other, about last month on, on uh, YouTube, this, this is one of the barns we did, which is actually up on YouTube now, okay? And, and um, I ran across... This photo today, yesterday, sometime, this photo of a barn, and I thought that was a really cool picture, okay? You're going, yeah, I don't know, Ginger, just, I, but you're going to, um, John, do you have the picture that I started with for this one? It's right over there. I can see it from here. See, right there on the table? So I want you to see that you don't get, you don't get to these without a little imagination, okay? So, for instance, this, this barn picture here started like this, Okay? So I'm gonna. So we're gonna take this picture, and we're gonna make a painting tonight, eight by ten. We're gonna do it together, and you're gonna see. So why did I like this photo? All right. So I like this photo because I love this sort of blue, you know, half painted wood. I love that. Can you zoom in on it for me, please? Oh yeah. yeah as soon as I find my buttons here. Oh good. Good buttons are good. Yeah. So here we go. So I like this, but you know, the photographer, as a photographer, and you're gonna. You know, everybody's a photographer nowadays. You know. Everybody's got a cell phone. You're a photographer. So you're driving along. And you say, honey, stop the car. I need to take a picture of a barn. And this is what you got. Say, Let's just say, right? And then you're going, yeah, but there you've got this stupid tree. It looks like it's practically growing out of the roof. And that, But there's some nice shadows here on the roof because of that tree. And then you've got this dumb thing in the middle of the, the barn. This is not good painting design. So what you've got, all you've got is, you know, is a reference photo. You don't have a painting. And, and remember, you're, you're not historians. Your job, they already have people for that. They get paid big bucks, too. So, and they rewrite history all the time. Just watch the news. But I'm just saying that um, that's not your job. Your job is to look at something and express something about yourself in the picture. And maybe it would be different than what I've expressed, but I'm just going to show you my thinking on this. So what I did was I went into a uh, paint program. This is snag it. This isn't big technical stuff. <laughs> And I lassoed out a piece of the barn, and then I came up with this. So now look what happens. How much better that is we remove the tree, okay? And then I'm, and so I'm discussing, I removed the tree, and then you know what else I didn't like? Well, see, that we, we had to get rid of this part of the tree, and I did it the same thing. So the tree's gone. I put the tree behind the barn, okay? And then I said to myself, you know what? I like trees that are, that are got leaves on them, not this old bare dead stuff, okay? So I'm, we're going to go ahead and just paint this. I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. And as we start mixing colors, because I have no idea what we're doing, we're doing it together, right? We're just doing it together. And, um, uh, and I'm, again, we're still waiting for them to get our website up. What's the latest on that, John? Did you talk to anybody earlier about that? Well, Wait. the progress report, let me just tell folks what happened to our website, gingercooklive.gallery. Um, as Ginger was alluding to, 
uh, the traffic has increased a lot. When we gave the free video away for Ginger's birthday. Oh, at, yeah, that uh, one? Let me show you that. We gave that away. Do we have that? Don't you, know, you have it right there? No. <sighs> why, why do I not have these things? Oh, because you come up late when Sammy runs down to get you. You weren't around. Oh, well, I can't. What, do we pass each other on the stairs? <laughs> That's <Sure>. a small. <laughs> I give up. Did we hang it back up? I mean, <laughs> I bet the bear did. He was cleaning up last Okay, day. so I ought to keep telling you what, while he's at. I'm going to put some paint out. And if you don't really want to know what this is, this is just a wax paper pad. And if you like these little label things, I do 3D with sheet. We made these up. These are just address labels. If anybody, when our website gets back up, you can just email us. We'll just send you the, the template for this. you got to buy the labels, but, you know, it's free of charge. You don't have to be a member to get it. All right, this is the culprit. This is what... Um, this is the this is the lesson, and incidentally, you have a week left to get this, and that's okay. We're, we now own our own cloud, apparently, if they ever turn it on. <laughs> we we actually own a cloud. How about that? Um, to the tune of well, whatever that was a month. Wow. Hundred sixty bucks a month. Hundred sixty bucks a month, but we own a cloud. I've always wanted a cloud, you know. All right, so we 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 offer this website this that particular painting for free on our website when it's up and running. And you have until February 28th. In the to upper right-hand corner, you will find a link to that. Yeah. You have to have a Vimeo account to download. It's not a big deal. It's a free account. It's like YouTube, no big deal. So but that's oh, why no, you can paint it right on our website. We had over 2,000 people uh, paint it. Yeah. So the website has seen a lot of traffic, and the people that we were with said, uh, "Look, guys, you're growing a little faster than you know any of us thought." And they said, you got to do something about it. We go, fine, we'll do it, um, you know, in the middle of the morning. They go, no, your site's down now, and we can't activate it again until you do something. So they're in the process of upgrading it, and they have been making progress. They did fi move all the files over to the new server, but apparently some of them that did not come over, so they're recopying them again. So that's where we are in that regard. Uh, the site will be back up, we hope, yet this evening. They are diligently working on it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I mean, we, there's some people with foreign accents that are come after I get them out because I'm all right. So I'm looking at this. You're going. Well, how are you deciding what colors to put out? All right. Let's just talk about this. Let's move this out of the way. Remember, you've got like another week to get this for free. Well, listen, we, we're love that you love the birthday gift, and we're not the least bit sorry. And we're happy for the traffic. It's just as an inconvenience. I mean, who does stuff at 2 in the afternoon when you can do it at 2 in the morning? It's like those people, you know, in California when they work on the roads, they have a company called a state organization called Caltrans. California transportation and trust me nobody's screwing around on the freeways at, uh, at 2 in the <laughs> afternoon they do they understand it's at, n at night only in Houston the first time I came to Houston I actually saw somebody out there with a bag of cement and a shovel on a freeway I'm not kidding it's gotten a little better but <laughs> it was <laughs> a shock much, right <laughs> you know so um, <laughs> really honestly I'm going to put out a little zinc white here or you have mixing white, and you know you don't have to paint along with me. Follow my thinking on this. We'll leave this up. Then you can go ahead and create this paint. Maybe you'll hate it. I don't know, but you're going to see why I thought it was a good idea. Even if you never paint it, you're going to discover some stuff about what you need to look for in a photograph. Okay? So we want some ultramarine blue, and believe it or not, um, we're going to want phthalo blue too. Um, that, but but probably the big thing is some burnt umber, some cad red medium. Burnt umber, cad red medium, and white make a really nice gray. And I'm not going to get too clever with the sky today. I mean, you could have done a sunset or something too. There could have been a lot of things you could do. But we're not going to do, you know, what we want to do now is just keep it kind of simple. Sort of the kiss, kiss, did you ever have that? The kiss method? Keep it simple, stupid. Remember that, John? Yep. Oh, yeah. Kiss, yeah, keep it simple. Keep um, it simple, stupid. And I remember. I remember having this very wise woman one time. I was like 18 and she was 27. She seemed really well preserved for 27. I remember the arrogance of youth. Isn't that funny? I remember really thinking that, you know. And, and she had been, a, she was an art teacher. Um, and um, so the two things I remember about her, I won't tell you the second thing, but the first thing that kind of relates to you guys is um, she said, she had this quote and I've never forgot it. She always said, ask yourself, what can I take away and not ruin the effect? In other words, most people want to know what they can keep adding. Well, this is good. I'll put a squirrel here. Or I'll do this or I'll do that. But can you still tell the story? You know, you've got to be your own editor. Uh, did anybody ever, did you ever read any of Anne Rice's books, uh, uh, Vampire Lassad, any of those? No, I didn't. Karen did, though. She read a lot of them. Yeah, Karen did? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, uh, it was interesting. After, I think Vampire Lassad had, had, a, had a publisher, but when she got real famous, she decided that she didn't need any editors. Really. And... Um, 
This is some burnt sienna. We're going to want that. Didn't need any editors. Well, the thing about it is, is that, um, and, and you guys, and you can, t you can, toward the end, you could, you know, some of the later books, I quit reading them after a while, but I mean, I liked your stories. But the thing that was, is I personally felt that an editor might have been beneficial. You know, that was my opinion. But, but the thing is that you don't have an editor. I mean, as a, a personal art coach, I can be your editor. You know, a little bit, you know. I mean, if you're sending me once a month, you can send me in a, a painting that's your own original idea, as long as you give me reference photos or two or four. I need to know how you thought this up and what your thinking was on it. I can be, help you be an editor. But for the most part, artists were on our own. So you've got to be your own editor. And so that's the question you ask yourself. What can I take away and not ruin the effect? So we're doing this picture. And then what did we take away? Where did, where's the picture we took away? Where's, where's that? Uh, ah, so, yeah, here. So we decided, remember, we took away the tree, put it behind, and I'm just going to make a gray sky for simplicity because we're going to have a lot of green leaves and stuff. So to make gray, all right, so then you're going, well, how do you make gray? So we're not doing black and white. So then how do you make gray? Well, we had a... Uh, well, you know, it's extraordinary to me. I'm sitting here going, <laughs> where's the color? Ah, oh, here's one. Still in the package. Where's the one that's not in the You just had package? it. You had it. You just moved it. Did I? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Well, we're going to make gray. So you're going to start with white, like that, because it's on the light side of the gray scale, all right? And now we're going to add a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Look at, see, I'm sort of scraping. So see the trick on this is you don't, look, you don't dive into the, um, the paint. Oh, thank you, John. So, Just saying. Huh. I like to think of us, um, the creative genius gets lost in thought. Don't you like that? Uh, couldn't be a memory thing. No, I think this is just a, what, what did we decide it was at dinner? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. One of us should have written it down. Creative brilliance. That Cre was it. It's there it was. It's, it was it's, brilliant. It's, it's not a senior moment. It's called creative brilliance. And when you, what, and, and the longer you live, the more, you know. The you more mean, brilliant the, you become. Well, they, they stack up, you know, like cordwood. <laughs> uh, okay, so you've got, now that was, um. See, this is what happens when you don't put all the paint out. That was zinc white. See, zinc white does nothing, right? So moving on to the white. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the white. Listen, we do this cold sober. I don't know what would happen if we started drinking. You know, it's, just, it's a good just, thing this is not one of those sippy parties. Yeah, well, we, you know, not to say anything about that, but we're just saying, you know, we're doing this cold sober. Um, I would have to be very careful. You know, I, 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 when I uh, was teaching with Merlot to Masterpiece, um, I never, ever drank at one of those parties. Never, ever. And it was, wasn't because our, my employer particularly cared. I think so, a lot of the other teachers did. They'd sort of get a little looped and then kind of everybody kind of got into the party. I didn't because I don't think, I, I, I would say something snarky to somebody, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it was hard as it was. I mean, there were times when I was working five nights a week doing that, including Sunday afternoons. And get, not getting home till one in the morning, and by the fifth night, um, it's sober. It was tough to be polite, okay? <laughs> you know, and um, so I put a little bird umber in that. See that? Hey, is it possible to make gray without white? No. Just thought I'd ask. Did Did you just come up with this on your own, or somebody no. asked that? Somebody asked that one. Okay, I was just going to worry about you, John. Okay, but all right. So no, all right, I now, wouldn't ask that. I know. Now that look question. at this gray I've got. Do you see it? Do you see that? See the gray I've got? That's a beautiful gray. You know, you can't hardly tell because it's a gray thing. There's a gray I've got, and that's just burnt, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, <laughs> and um, uh, and white. Now, if I put a little more blue in it, for instance, it will be slightly a blue gray. I just wanted you to see that. Okay, so I'm going to put a little more of that blue in there to just, and then I'll add a tiny bit of cad red medium, less than less than one percent, and I'll warm that up a little bit more. All right. You know, there's different grays. There's blue gray, yellow gray, green gray, that kind of stuff, right? So now look at this. See, see the difference? Now let's add more white to that. Just, just, pile, just dump the rest of the titanium in there. And I want you to see this. See here? Well, is that light enough? No, it isn't really. So I'm going to put some more white. I mean, that's just how you, it's interesting. Someday just sit down and make yourself a sheet of different grays. See what you can do to, you know, what will make gray for you. Just understand that... Um, all right, so here, there, here's that. That's pretty good. All right, so I'm liking this light one. Maybe I'll dump some more white in there, a little bit more blue. There we go. All right, and it doesn't have to be mixed perfectly. Okay, I'm going to scoot this all up. 
Um, I was going to say on the canvas, but I didn't, so um, there I you go. I wish I did earlier. Did you? No, I thought about it. I go, no, she's been doing it, showing people what to do. So I didn't. Well, see, when you have these moments, when you think you should do something, that's the moment to say yes. That's your inner voice saying, better sign the canvas. If not, stay on the canvas. She's going to forget. You know how she is, right? Just hey, Ginger, it, right? can you make phthalo blue with primary blue? No. <laughs> no. No. Listen, blue is a primary. Bl bl yellow, blue, you know, yellow, blue, and red are primary colors. When you buy these different shades of blue, um, blue is a the phthalo blue green shade. It's, it's a turquoise blue. No, you can't make it. You got to actually, at some point, you have to sort of um, tough it out and buy the colors, you know? Um, yeah, you know, that at least if, if you can, maybe with thalo green, yeah, maybe if you added thalo green to it or something, but then you bought the thalo green. And who want, I don't want to own any thalo green, so there you go. Except that last night I told you you should have thalo green. <laughs> um, if you want, if you didn't have, ultra, if you, well, listen, I've had the a teal. tube. With, if you didn't, if you wanted the teal color, yeah. I've had a tube with thalo green for years. I mean, I never hardly use thalo green. Hey, guess what? Guess what? My fan's not on. Yay! Oh, woo, woo, yay! You're my favorite. <laughs> There's your fan. I'm on. What more do you want? I'm there, Sammy. I mean, what do you want from us? It's American. <laughs> you want what? Oh, you lost it now. <laughs> There's no stopping you. I need air conditioning. <laughs> Short of that, some sort of electric fan would work, right? Since we seem to be living with the, you know, sort of Flintstone technology here, but... <laughs> no heat, no air conditioning. Come on, what do you want? Everything? <laughs> Next, you want a roof over your head. Oh, uh, well, we do have that, right? <laughs> Though the side, big hunk of siding just blew off the house the other day. <laughs> we caught it before it went flying down to the neighbors and decapitated somebody. <laughs> oh, the storms in Texas. All right, do you see the gray here? See how we got the gray going here? See, that, that's great. Now, I mean, honestly, there is no black in this. So there's your gray. Now, there is a color you can buy. It's called neutral gray. Some artists like that. Is but that honestly, like the Payne's gray? Or is it something different? No, it just comes, you know, it's called neutral gray. And then oh. there's, you know, remember I had that whole box of things, the shades of gray, remember that? From yeah. Liquid uh, Jerry's came out with a thing, you know, you know, 12, 12 shades, shades of gray. Yeah. And they, they're green grays and blue grays. And um, someday I'll show you guys that. That was I bought some of that. I have it, two of that. Okay, so now here's our picture. I want you to see where we are here. So I got to bring, we brought it now. Remember, it's always lighter toward the horizon. Remember, you guys remember that? That's kind of a rule unless there's a storm, it's lighter toward the horizon. So I'll just take some um, white and mix it in here like that. Now, look, I don't want to stripe, do I? No, so just take the side of your brush like this and kind of uh, just fuzz that out. There you go. Now it's lighter down here, okay? Now toward the bottom here, we're going to have it dark. All right, so that has to be dark. And now here's what's, oh gosh, there's so much to tell you. You know, I mean, think of these things, so much to tell you. And I repeat it over and over again because I'll tell you a bunch of stuff and people can remember about 10 things and they can't remember anymore. Well, you know, again, it's, like it's a certain age thing. But anyway, so if, it's, if the color is going to fall on the dark side of the grayscale, see my little grayscale here? I do. You can't have white on your brush, really, and mix that, because you'll just use zillions of gobs of paint in order to make that work. So, incidentally, isn't this a great-looking brush? This is a Ruby Satin Silver number 12. Look how fast it just covered that canvas. Did you all notice that, how cool that was? So what I have to do is rinse the brush. You, you, and didn't, get, you didn't paint it all the way to the end? No, because we're going to put dark on the bottom. Ooh, I'm excited. So, I, and again, I want dark on the bottom. So I'm going to take some burnt umber and some ultramarine blue like this. See that? Right? Mix it like that with the brush. And I'm going to come down here like this, and I just want it dark on the bottom. I don't know what I'm going to do down yet, there, here yet, because you and I are designing this together. This is fun, right? We're designing a painting together. And um, let's see, how'd this kind of go? Well, it had kind of a little hill here, but this, this is good enough. Good enough. All right, so we're saying it's kind of dark down here like this. And um, maybe we'll come up into the gray here. See, now we're going to come up into the back hills. Ooh, I'm going to make a little hill back there. Ooh, this is cool, right? And say there's a little back hill behind the barn like that, like that. And then we just kind of, much, you know, pull that out. All right, so that's my, that's sort of my underpainting. And I kind of like that hill, but maybe we'll just do something like this here, like this. Make it a little more interesting than like a little lump here, like that. All right, so there's our hill in the background. Here's our sort of foggy day. 
Now we're going to go ahead and dry this and sketch in the barn, all right? So that's the big plan. Yes? So, John, you have some great stuff to share with everybody. It's 15 minutes of, uh, we're in the 15 minutes of the... Are right. we? Wait a minute. How long have we been on? I don't know. How long have we been on? Since 25. You know, so let's, you know, we want, we're hoping people, if you're, if you're late joining us, um, what we're going to be painting, you're going to design a painting with me, and I just want to say this one before I dry it. This is it. really like a, uh, a quickie RAS show, reality art yeah, studio. Yeah, it's like a quickie reality art studio, except that, um, yeah. And then, so then, then I kind of edited it, put the tree behind here. We're not going to have this silly tree growing out of the side of the barn. I'm going to show you how we're going to fix this photograph. But at this point, this has to dry, okay? So, um, wow, you made me laugh so hard my eyes are tearing up. You're so funny. Me? I had nothing to do with it. Oh, I'm <laughs> sitting here minding my own business. I know. Just oh, you're going to actually start drying? I'm going to dry. You, got, you can ch chat with the folks. Tell okay. them something interesting. <laughs> oh, show them. The, oh, my gosh. John finished the Wave and Water, finally the edit on the Wave and Water Masterclass. It's over seven and a half hours long, this video. That's what it's at, 30 by 40. And g you know what? For every hour of video, he had four to five hours of editing. That's how crazy that was. It took us almost, almost two months to edit that, yeah. right? But yeah. it's done. Show them that. I'm going to dry this. Okay. All right. We turned her down. I still have to work on the microphone to block her. Let me show you the wave and water we just finally I get it done. It took me like 60 hours of editing all of this. So it's really closer to like a um, almost 10 hours, 8 to 10 hours of doing that. And uh, I'm sorry you can't see it. It was up on the website. That's why we brought it down. It's a big, big lesson. We will have this one for sale. And we are thinking of a brand. This is not going to be inexpensive. It's uh, it's 12 parts, a um, lot of camera angles. You're you're going to see every brush stroke that Ginger does. You don't miss a thing. Everything's right there. So keep that in mind as a possible something coming up in the future. Um, I want to show you. I don't know if I showed you guys this yesterday. Karen, Karen's. Um, what do we call that one? The umbrella flower, the flower market. That one I really like. And a little bit different as far as really bright colors. Looking good. And Ginger's back with us. So we'll go back to. All right, I'm back. Ginger. So, all right. So, um, it's got a little lumpy. Good thing I'm going to put uh, some leaves there. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about this before. Um, somebody called, you know, Bob Ross used to call things happy accidents. I just want to tell you my position on tap happy accidents, you know? I think it's better to be a deliberate creator because happy, happy accidents, the problem with a happy accident, particularly if your painting turn out well, is that you don't know how to do it again. But if you're deliberate and understand why you're doing something step by step, you're going to have more success than a few happy accidents, okay? Though, celebrate the happy accidents when you get them. Just don't count on them, you know? So, uh, all right, so we've got this picture here. Here's that. Now, we know that We've got, a, we've got some sort of, um, you know, there's like a hill in the background, and we've got some sort of light thing here. And then I'm going to come up about this far. Let's see, here's my barn. And um, I'm just sort of, you can kind of see it. Let's try the different colored chalk here. Maybe yellow will show up more. Kind of yellow oxide. All right, so here's my barn. I'm just going to come in like that. And uh, it's, this is a pretty for, straightforward box here. I think I'll move it over just a little bit, you know. This is what chalk's for. And um, this is really, uh, you know, like a Monopoly house. This is really straightforward. Like this, there's a little A here. And then here's the side down here. And it's going to come like the, about like that. All right, so there's our, there's our barn, like that. This line and this line must be parallel. This roof could be a little saggy. It might be more interesting than if it was perfect, OK? And it's nice if the eave of the barn hangs out a little bit. You know, the roof hangs out over a little bit. There's our barn here, like this. Let's bring this down a little bit lower. Now we've got some um, stuff doing this, okay? So I mean that's that's, and then we got uh, some trees back here and stuff, okay? So I'm looking at that, going, that's pretty nice. I mean I'm liking that. I think uh, maybe I still want this a little shorter here, like this, maybe like that. Okay, so there we go. All right, there's the barn. All right, so we've we've made that decision. Here's the barn. Here's the picture, right? This is where we are so far. So we know we've got a, you know, we know we've got some trees back here coming back here behind it. And um, 
we don't really see the, the, the back end of this one, this barn, too much. We've got to bring this eave down like this. And we're going we're gonna to have a tree that's coming back off the canvas, maybe doing this, that's coming in front of it, but it's not growing out of the side of the barn. And let's, let's shorten this a bit. Okay, let's just shorten it right like that. Now here's the advantage of chalk. It just wipes off, all right? And particularly if you're using white chalk, it will wipe off even better because, um, you know, I'm using yellow so you can see it. But all right, let's just say that there's our barn here like that and it's coming like that. And we've got this tree on this side that's doing this, okay? And then we've got this one that's coming on this side. You wouldn't want it on the middle. And then we've got a tree over here, but we've got to put the background in first. And you're going, oh, wow, man, I didn't get that at all. All right, well, bear with me. We're going to just, uh, we got to do an underpainting. So we might as well use this big brush, right, and do an underpainting. So I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber, mix them together. I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm just using this chiseled brush like that. I'm just going to paint in the roof line like that. Here we go. See, I love, look at this big brush. It'll still make this, this line. Now, remember we talked about direction of the brush strokes. They're all down here at an angle. That's real important. Brush strokes down at an angle. Okay. Now I'm going to go burnt umber ultramarine blue for underneath. There's my dark color underneath the roof of this barn here like this. So if there's a little bit more blue in it. And so look how dark that is. Okay. So now we just got to, you got to get laid. Everything in acrylics is about layers. All right. So you're designing this with me. And we do a lot of that. You know, one of the things people always ask us is on our website, you know, what do you guys do? There's so many different things to paint. We have so many different um, avenues. All right, I'm going to just kind of make this a little bit steeper here and here. Let's just bring this out over. Let's just bring our roof line out a little bit here, a little bit over this way, like that, kind of creep it out over here. I want it to kind of stick out on both sides here, so I'll make that bigger, okay? And then um, we're just going to do this. It's going to do this. I don't know, something like that. All right, so that's what we got so far. And then let's see, what else do we got? Um, that's about what we can do here with the big brush. Well, we could put a little yellow oxide here. Wait a minute. Is that yellow oxide? No, that's burnt sienna. But I wanted yellow oxide. You can tell that, can't you? Well, you said yellow oxide. And I just want to make sure that... Well, I'm, that was a good... I'm trying to learn. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good trying catch. to learn here, good catch. you know? Because I need a little <laughs> yellow oxide with it. It's burnt sienna and yellow oxide in the... Uh, let me just, now I'm not going to rinse the brush, I'm just going to wipe it off. Now, I've got a little yellow oxide on there. There you go, see? A little bit of burnt sienna. And I want this side a little bit lighter. That's where the sun's hitting it. The sun's coming from this direction. So this side of the barn is lighter, okay? All right, see, see barn. Look at how fast that was. Now, we, now, there's not much going on here, but let's take this and those two colors, right? And a little white, okay? And a little gray. Let's make a little gray, kind of a yellow gray color. And let's come back up here like this and just tap in some of this lighter color. Then let's go with a little darker color. I know this is kind of funny, a little bit of burn over. I'm using just up and down brush strokes. And I'm going to say that there's some sort of grassy stuff growing back here like that, some sort of here. And then behind there, there was a hill. And I think I'm going to expand that hill a little bit. Here's some, here's some let's just bring our hill up like, um, like this. I'm just using a little ultramarine blue and burnt umber and saying I want this hill coming up behind the barn like this. There we go. Now that I've got the barn in, it's a little easier to see where I want my my mountain right back here. It's just some sort of little hill here like that. All right. So they were saying that's in the background. And let's put a little more brown with that burnt umber. There we go. It's, uh, that ultramarine blue, a little more burnt umber with that. So there's my there's my kind of hill back there. And we're going to make just some shadows on it, okay? Now, now what? Okay? Well, this is the trick with stuff like this. You've got to dry it, all right? Now, most people just don't take enough time to dry anything. And so, you know, then they're always kind of unhappy with the results, all right? So that's one of the first things. You can use a big brush at first if you're just trying to, you know, get some background in, something like that. You've got to get something in, so that's what you're doing. But at some point, you have to dry it which we're going to do. It won't take long, but let's just take a minute and dry it, all right? Okay. All right, keep off drying again. What else do I have? Anything else to show you? Oh, well, I'm going to show you this one. This is a cool, this is a drawing somebody did of the block and tackle. 
and they're gonna I, I believe they're gonna paint this I personally don't think I would paint over that drawing but uh, that so I think that's their intent I think that is that's pretty phenomenal uh, can we have a dog cat or dog in the picture in this picture I don't think that's gonna happen tonight that's a good idea I'll certainly suggest it to her I think we'll be lucky to get this I mean she's creating this painting that we're doing usually what we do before we do a lesson is she'll do a dry run, figure out what she wants to do, design it, and have it ready to go. But tonight, she decided, oh, what the heck. Let's just go for it. And so that's what she's done. All right, some of you have been asking about the super chat that's down there. The super chat is, chat is a way to make a donation to us to help offset some of the costs that we are incurring a little bit more rapidly than we're used to, or that we had anticipated anyways. Are we back? Why is the hill? Why is the hill so close to the structure? Um, you know what? Um, you nope. just peanut gallery just stuck. Who's asking that? Um, is that you? No. Okay. Anna, Anna did. Okay, right Anna. There. So because I'm going to shout at Anna because this is called. All right, this is a good question. Why is the hill so close to the structure? Because we haven't pushed it back yet. You know, this is Basically, why you drive between layers. In. You're just blocking you, everything is, in. We're we're just blocking stuff in, darling. That's all we're doing right now. This is what we're doing. We're just blocking it in. And I'm going to show you how to create a painting just like this. You know, might have been good to have... Th this is a little zinc white now. Now look what happens. Right, like this. Now this is the zinc white. Now what happened to our hill? Now we're going to just create some clouds going up here with the zinc white. Like here in the sky, using like this. Now there was a cloud video last night, if you guys kind of want to know how we're doing it. Now look, here's my hill. It's way back here now. See? Not close to the structure anymore, right? And we're just going to come up here like this. There's some, we're running into some yellow chalk, but that's okay. We're just going to play. We'll go with that, right? So here's some clouds by up here. A lot of this is going to be, um, let's take a little bit of our gray paint now. I'm just going to come up here with our sky color because we already know what that is, right? And um, just maybe repaint the sky a little bit too. All right, we can do that. We can just have a little bit of darker sky up at the top, a little bit of mixing white here. And we're just going to say that there's our, this is our sky. And it doesn't hurt to do layers of paint. That's the trick. This is a, mixing white is a translucent color, and it's a very good color for clouds, like that. And it and it really does, you know, push things back in the background. So we're suggesting a hill back there, but you don't really see it. All right. So it's back there. And if you do, you know, you don't want to get it too thick. If you get it too thick, this is why you have to dry between layers. You can just take a brush, and um, you know, wipe some, you know, wipe a little bit of the hill back out, so it kind of shows. See that. A little bit of that hill shows. Now, if we were to take titanium white, let me just show you the difference, and add a few clouds like this. Let's just say we wanted a few more clouds. This is titanium white, and you see how much brighter that is, right? Like that. So we could we could come up here like this even, and into that gray that we just did. And I mean, we could create quite a sky just doing this, right? Now already it's a more interesting picture, right? You don't want to get it too crazy, but you know this is going to be behind our stuff, right? Okay, so there's, there's our, that's what we got so far. Now, what we have to do here is um, we, we've got to start layering things. And there's a, some things I can work on. I know I want some trees back here. The sky's wet. I don't want to just spend the whole time drawing with you. So what I want to do is make sure I have more colors out so I can mix. Um, let's, get some cat, let's get some cad uh, uh, yellow medium out, all right? And um, that's a good one to have, okay. And I'm going to take a little cad, red medium, cad yellow medium, and make a little bit of a um, uh, kind of an orange color, all right, like that. And then what would, what would, what would tone that down? Purple. Why? It's Why would purple tone down o orange? Isn't it opposite? Purple is an opposite orange. Actually, turquoise blue is opposite orange, but how, but how do you make orange? red and yellow red right and, yellow. and purple tones down yellow so it will also tone down um yellow yeah. and and if you didn't for instance have burnt sienna you could add a little purple to that say and then it would get almost a rust color see that so it makes it almost a burnt sienna color see that that's pretty cool you know if i added you know more purple it would be so i want to come up here on my barn here and i'm going to this using a this is a ruby satin silver number eight and now I'm just sort of dry brushing this over the barn, and I'm going to just finish the, take a little more care with the roof line now than I had before, right? We're going to start 
taking this a little more seriously than we were doing in the past, but that's okay. Here it is. Now, I'm going to wipe the paint off the brush and just come in here like that and allow some of the darker color to show through, which is why we did it dark in the first place. When you're painting with acrylics, this is important to remember, you always start with your darkest color and the farthest thing away. And it may be a light color, the farthest thing away. But I would like to announce the website is up. I would like to announce an important message. Oh, the website's Sorry up, to yay. Sorry this previously scheduled program. The website is back online. Oh, thank my you. gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I... You, I know, know. you were in a panic mode. I was in a panic mode. Was I'm I in sorry. a panic mode? No, John no. never panics. I, I panic. I remember the. I remember you came down and I, um, I offered to take you somewhere and um, and get you a pedicure, and you know, <laughs> said I don't want you to run screaming out of the place. I said you might every once in a while it doesn't hurt to have that done. You don't have to polish. It just somebody takes care of your feet, and you said you never panic. But I'm thinking. Um, you don't. Now, now I'm, I'm pretty calm. Well, no, I'm not. And really, when it comes <laughs> to technical stuff... <laughs> You're nowhere near calm when it comes to technical stuff. Well, I just want to throw out my hands and just throw things. You know No, what you mean? just say, here, it's not doing it. It's Take not this. doing it. Fix it. Well, it's, it's great to have something like a fix-it person, right? And just, um, you know, my brother, when I first started learning about computers, my brother lived with me. Dennis passed away a couple years ago. Um, but uh, he was like 10 years older than me. And um, uh, his... Um, he was my oldest brother, where there were five kids in the family. And Dennis, in 1990, he came to move, he came to Texas, and he um, he lived with me for a while. And he was at, we were just getting kind of into computers in those days, and he knew a lot about them. He had to, he was really good at it, and he'd say things like, I'd, I'd say, I don't know how to do this, and he'd say, Well, I told you yesterday. <laughs> that means nothing. Nothing to me. You told me no, yesterday. See, I, I learned that a long time ago. It doesn't matter what you told him yesterday. It was yesterday. That's yesterday, yeah. man. I either need a step one, step two, and a big sheet of big print. You know, even then, big print. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. You know, and then he was such a, he was such a rascal. Don't you like that word? He was such a rascal. Uh, he's passed away now. I, I, if he was alive, I'd say something more strong, but he was such a <laughs> rascal. And um, uh, he, he, little signs that pop up. <laughs> on our computer every once in a while we were working going thank god for uncle dennis <laughs> really <laughs> like pop-ups before that no one ever heard of pop-ups all right so we come along here on this side this is uh, turn notice i'm turning this sideways and we're putting the roof color here like you guys got that see roof color all right so far so good everybody's happy now it's already looking better yeah okay so we've got the roof color now that's not the complete that's not the final word on the roof color what if we came up here and you know layered a second bit something like that and we haven't even put the blue on but there you go we got something right so already you're a little relieved because you're going that's one ugly picture ginger um yeah it is but it's going to get better and that's the thing when you're painting this particularly if you you know it's one thing if you're looking at um an artwork that i'm doing and it gets to the stage and you're doing it with me and you're thinking yeah it's ugly but i saw it and it's going to get better but when this is your piece all by yourself and there's no ginger there's nobody else and you get to the stage you're thinking man why did i ever take up painting i should just yeah, I should find my violin. Where did I leave that? Right? Something like that, right? <laughs> Don't do that. Just know it's going to be like this before it's going to be like something else, right? So, all right, so let's take a little bit of the yellow oxide now out of that orange color, right? And I'm just going to come back here like this, and I'm gonna, just going to tap in a little yellow oxide, and it creates some sort of weird grassy stuff. I don't know what it is, but we've got some growing back here. Just something. It doesn't have to be much. We're going to say it's growing back here like this. And um, I'll put a little white with it. And, um, you know, back here, we don't know. It's just back here like this. We're not talking about it. And just add a few little light highlights in it like this. It's a, some, that, it's a farm, man. It could be anything. Don't you love driving on the side of the road? And, um, and the game is, what are they growing in the field? What do you think that is? You know, maybe some of you know, but, you know, that's a good, that's a good game, you know? Keeps the children entertained. It's been some suggested of the rest of to add a duck or a cat or a dog to this picture. Well, you know what? Let's finish the picture and see. Because remember the old rule, what can I take away and not ruin the effect, right? Right. So now we've got to sit there and we're going to say that we want a tree. We need some trees now, yeah? And we know that we, we know we've got a tree that's coming back over here somewhere. And we've got this neat one by the house. See, where's, where's our picture? We got this neat one here, right? And we got a fence back here. I guess we could put the fence in, right? Yeah, so I let's let's do that. Let's just put a fence in. Because the fence is behind the tree? Yeah, the fence was behind the tree. Just some sort of old broken down fence here. Oh, do you remember when Sammy's birthday is? 
I don't, John. Did I believe it was May 2nd. Was Sammy's birthday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Poor Sammy. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sammy. I forgot your birthday last May. That's yeah. All right. all right. So that's all right. I'm going to just dry my fence. Now, just take the second. Oh, gee, gee, oh. You just do that. No warning whatsoever. Just turn it on like we're not listening to you. All of a sudden, we get a big blast in our ear. Are you crazy over there? Who you call? Who you be calling crazy? Who you, I be you, calling you crazy. You better not be calling. You better not be. Let's not be slinging names here, right? You know, let's not be slinging names. No slinging names. I'm not names. talking to teddy bears, right? Just saying, right? <laughs> what can we take away without ruining a picture, right, Lynn? You're learning them. That's another gingerism. Write them down, folks. That's another you will gingerism. Be All right, so we got the light coming from this direction. So let's put some light on the. The fence post, like that, a little bit. All right, the light on the fence post. Now we're going to throw up the um, the um, tree. Okay, so we, we've got this ruby satin silver brush. We could use something smaller. I want you to see how cool this is, right? So we want these trees. Don't put it right dead center in the middle of the barn. That would not be good. But you could say that there was a tree coming up here like this. I'm just using part of this like that, like that. There's a that's a good tree, and. Um, then what happens to it? I don't know. I'm thinking about that one. And now, but I know I've got one here that's coming up. And if you're not sure, put a dot where you think it ought to be, like this. Now you can push harder. Trees, let's tell you about tree rules. This is burnt umber. Trees are fatter at the bottom, and they, get ta and they taper as they go up. And you can't have something fat in your tree that looks like it ate, you know, a snake or something, swallowed an anaconda or a watermelon in the middle of the tree. So you can't... You can't have a big bulge here, all right? So remember, it's tapering up toward the top. Now, you can get away with a trunk like this, but probably a smaller uh, brush would be better. But let's just say we've got this one coming. It's kind of forking this way, and then I want it to just look at the thin line I can get. Are you guys impressed? Just, are you impressed? This is what a good brush does. This is what a good brush does. The harder you push, the fatter the line. Look and how big that brush is, and you're getting such a thin line out of it. Yeah, isn't that cool? And then what you do is you wet it like this and, and squeeze it tight. And then, you know, put it flat on there like that. And then you just want to um, come like there it goes. So let's a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue. This is our dark tree here. And then I'm going to just say I've got another branch coming this way, crossing over here. See, look how thin these lines are. Now, I, I'm just showing you this because this is what a good brush does. And that is a ruby satin number? This is a ruby satin silver number eight. I mean, that's a big brush, and that's it's making these thin, thin lines. And I think that people don't realize a brush like that can do that, okay? All right, now we're going to make it a little thicker here. We're going to get trees like a little shoulder. So the harder you push, the fatter the line. See that? So that's sort of an interesting tree. And then I think over here, for sure I want one. I'm just, I just don't want to talk about this side of the barn. So I'm going to come up like this and say that there's another tree kind of leaning this way. And it's kind of off camera here. And then kind of dividing up like this. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, like that. I so there's a tree. That that that, that, we'll bring it in front here, right? And um, we'll bring some branches going this way. Now, I think at this point, I, I'll quit showing off and get a smaller brush. But I just <laughs> wanted you to see that you could do that, right? Quit showing off. <laughs> just you just have to show off. Uh, just, I, I just think that. Now, look, I got a little wide. And look, this is why you dry. See, I got a little wa wide there, so I'm just taking a clean brush. Rinse, wipe, swipe, and now, just erase it. Slowly. How, how long? Rinse, wipe, swipe. See, look, I just erased it. Did you know how, you how long we've been on YouTube? Now, that's not my question. I just need to know. So somebody asked how long I've been on YouTube. I yeah. don't know, a couple of years, right? I think we're on two years now. Yeah, but we're, and we're, you know, if you look at our first videos, we had this, you know, sad little microphone and this one little camera that was jumping all over the place. Now we got some good stuff here, you guys. We are doing some stuff. And absolutely. Now, okay, so we've got this one. Now we've got some tr coming up like this. Here's the same. This is an angle brush. And it's designed to do this. This is a number, it's a half inch angle brush. Is that half inch? Yeah. And, um, oh you know, so look, you want, you want your, your trees, to, your little trees like this to kind of fork around like this, cross over. And this is where, for instance, I don't have any on me like I would show you, but this is where if you're having trouble, you, would, you might enjoy um, flow paint for this kind of thing, for, you know, for real thin lines. You just might really like that. And let's just fork this one up here like this.
Now, what did you add to your regular paint if you didn't want to use I'm water? I'm just using water. You're just using water? In fact, here's, here's a little thing of water. Let me just show you how that would work. Um, what you want to do is you don't want to dive in with your brush. You just want a little tiny bit of water on it. And, and you get too much water and it doesn't work. It just thins it out too much. But you want a little thing like this. And there's our paper towel. So, um, yeah, it, uh, brushes are really make a big difference. And I think about one of, the, one of, this, one of my students um, that I was teaching at Jerry some years ago. I had this student, um, and, and it, it actually had a really lovely income. And he refused to buy a good brush. And I never understood it because he struggled with his artwork. And he spent all this money on all kinds of other stupid stuff. But it, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't buy a good brush. And then he complained that his stuff wasn't coming out. Okay? And I mean, he was buying the worst brushes. I said, I don't understand why you won't buy a good brush. And I think it just became a matter of pride with him. You know, I just like to argue. And eventually, though, when he finally did get these ruby satin silvers, he says, I don't know why I didn't listen to you. These are the best brushes on the planet. I should have gotten one. Here, I'm going to just say that there's another little one coming up here like this. We've got a few more coming out of our barn here like that. And let's see, this is a little stiff. Um, well, one thing you shouldn't do you know is don't don't have a yeah. if you've got a branch here right like this you know don't make Y's okay and and you know make sure that they're you know crossing over doing some stuff try not to make Y's let's make this a little thicker here and let's just let's just decide you can always add some width to your tree so start off skinny and then keep going all right so then we're not going to put all the little branches that there are in here and the reason we're not doing that is because uh, we're going to cover these up with leaves for the most part. But we, we'll just put a few in here like that. So you can see how you can kind of, and lines tell, tell you something. See this branch is bringing, these branches are kind of coming this way. And what we're doing now is just saying that, uh, you know, we're kind of bringing the eye this way. All right. So this is going to be like a triangular picture pattern. So as long as I'm in this dark color, what do I know for sure? Well, I know for sure that I want to just uh, kind of angle this roof a little better like that. And you always want some dark under the eaves like that. All right, so I'm, I know I want some dark there. And I want, I'm just going to put some dark lines coming down here, some sort of streaky lines coming down here like this. So I don't want to talk about this part of the barn too much, okay? And again, this is something you can easily do with a, with a uh, roof, roof like this, okay? I want a little bit of dark under there like that. All right, so so far so good. And then I, I've talked about this, and I thought, I was looking at this, and I thought that this would be interesting to have a window in here. We used to have these kind of long, skinny windows. Now, we don't have any black, so we're using purple, ultramarine blue, and, and uh, burnt umber. And we're going to say, see how much darker that is? I'm just going to throw a little window here, okay, like that, okay? And... Um, Maybe we're going to put in a barn door. You know, I know you got to get in this place somehow, right? So maybe we'll just say there's a barn door here somewhere, like there's some sort of barn door here, and then we'll put something up against it, or who knows what we're going to do. Maybe there's one up here, too. All right, we're making this up, right? But, you know, so far so good, okay? And I know that I want a very, very dark line under here like this. I want this very, very dark. This is always dark under the eaves here. Now, see, how this, this is really dark under here like that, okay? All right, so far so good? I want to get back to that question of the YouTube. Um, she has been a member since 2014, but her first video that she posted was on April 11th, 2014. Yeah, one of the best videos, the first videos I ever put up was I put up this one through another friend of mine who, who helped me make the video, and it was on how to stretch a fine art canvas, and she had it up on her side, but it was my thing. We had 750,000 views on that, and then... Um, um, something happened and she didn't realize that, you know, I said I'd really like to be able to put it over on my site. And when she took it down, of course, we lost all the views. You know, that was really a shame because we had, we were the number one video that people went to to look to see how to stretch a fine art canvas, which I think was sort of very flattering and very nice. And, you know, that, that was our deal. You know, I thought that was kind of cool, right? So, all right. So, so far, this is really a boring painting, nothing too interesting about it. We've just got a barn, but it's, it's an improvement, right? So, so, so here's our picture. You can zoom back out. Now, this is where the phthalo blue comes in. We're going to um, kind of jazz up this barn a bit, okay? And um, then I'm going to put a little phthalo blue out here. And um, we're going to use a little bit of burnt umber phthalo blue. And um, look at that. Isn't that, a pretty isn't that a beautiful color? Let's put a little tiny bit of, let's see, where's our ultramarine blue? 
We're going to mix some blues. If I used all ultramarine blue, red shade, thalo blue, green shade if you're buying Liquitex, and I use these blues to mix just about anything. There you go. Now we're going to add a tiny bit of cad red medium to that and gray it. Do you see what we just did? Like less than 1%. We're going to gray that blue. All right. And now I want to come down here like this, and I'm dry brushing this on like that, and I'm going to wipe most of the paint off the brush using this, just the flat of this brush, and you can feel, see the dark coming through. Can you, can you, I guess you can zoom in on this now, John. You can see the dark coming through. See like this, and almost like chalk. Now it becomes almost like chalk. All right, do you see that? And you get too much paint on, wipe it off. We're almost going to, it's almost like we're antiquing it, right, like that. All right. Okay, so which I think is kind of cool. I, I think that's kind of cool, and maybe we'll just say that there was something here around that we'll give them a little more decoration than they had over there. So it's not in the picture, but, you know, it's our barn, right? So now that I'm backing up looking at this, and if you see me looking off and not at you, it's because the, there's a monitor to my left, and I, it's like what you have to do is either hold your picture up to a mirror, okay, or you've got to back away from it. But if you'll just hold your picture up to a mirror, you'll see all the kind of the... You'll see, th you'll trick your mind into seeing things you didn't intend. So I need to bring this roof of this barn up a little bit here like this. I'm going to add a little bit more paint here. It's to brighten this up in a couple places. Because now we've left reality behind. We have a reference photo, but we've left it behind. Here's this red here. And uh, here's some of this a little bit red here like that. That's pretty. And let's come under here like this and just put a little red and bring it down. Now look what happened when I do that underneath this window. And maybe just dry brush a little of this red over here. This, most of it's gone, right? Look at that. See? Now we've really aged this. Now, a little bit of phthalo blue and that gray color we did. A little bit of phthalo blue and that gray color. It's just going to trust me on this, okay? Now, I'm going to come here like this, and I'm going to brighten up the blue in a couple places. See? Just a couple places. Not everywhere. Just a couple places, I'll brighten up that blue. And you've got to be careful because you can kill this. Now, what about, um, what about hip up here on the roof? What would happen if we added a little tiny purple to that color now? And then, same color, just add a little bit of purple. And what if we came up on the roof and um, we um, just, you know, added a bit of color right here on the roof here, like that. Not everywhere, just somewhere like that. Maybe it said, oh, right about in here too, huh? What do you think? See? Now it's better looking, yeah? Okay, so now, that while that's drying, yeah, meanwhile, do we want need that purple under here? I don't know that that would help us, but we could. We could put a little purple right there. All right, and how about around here on this thing, right here, like this? Let's just do like that, right there on the edge of that. Okay, so that looks better. Okay, so now you can kind of see, we don't want it as bright blue as this photograph. I mean, that's just weird, right? Even though it's true. <laughs> Even though that's true. See, true isn't, um, it's like um, when your mother told you it was okay, it's okay to tell a white lie, right? Right. Or a blue lie in this case. Yeah. So you're telling a blue lie. So, you know, um, sometimes, you know, you've got, you've got to adjust things. Now, we've got light coming from this way, so let's fix that. Let's take a little yellow oxide, a little bit of burnt sienna, right? A little bit of white, okay? Make this little light color. Now we're going to turn this sideways like that, and we're going to come along here like this, and using just the side of this brush, which is niftier than B, right? We're going to suggest some highlights on this tree, as long as we're out here playing, right? We're here, and we're going to add that. And notice how she turned the canvas. Yeah, turned it, and, 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 uh, and I think we're going to see yourself. some of this on this tree here, not as much. Um, we're going to suggest, you know, some highlights on this tree. It won't be as much because I don't want to take the eye off the canvas, right? But we're just going to say that there is some on this tree. And it's kind of come up this way. And, mm, boy, I don't like that curve right there. Let's just fix that right like that. Ooh, yeah, okay. So, all right, so that's that tree, okay? All right, so now we've got sort of a structure of something. We can work with something here, right? Now let's take a little, that same color, a little yellow oxide. I'm going to come right up here on this ledge. Okay, maybe right like that. I don't have to do much. And maybe right up here, here, a little bit of yellow oxide and white. Now look what happened. I'm just adding this extra color right up here on the, on the, on this uh, roof right here, maybe. 
This is all about layers. Okay? You know, you should just all about, you know, playing with layers and now we've got to make so okay, so our next thing is to um uh do something with the background and the trees because I personally think old dead trees are a little depressing. I mean, they can be very arty, but then you need a lot more branches and let's not do it. Let's not have old dead trees. Though I wouldn't mind having some more orange somewhere on this roof. I might come up here, a little bit brighter orange up here like this. Right like that, maybe a little bit right there. There, okay. So a little bit more orange on this roof and I wouldn't mind having a little bit more on the barn here too, like this. Just come down here like this. I was thinking that one. Yeah, were you thinking that too? You yep. were thinking it just it in would that same look good. spot, even in that same spot. Well, yeah, Ooh, I'm it's, getting there. Yeah, you're getting there, John. All right, now let's just let's just kind of straighten up this window a bit here, like that. Kind of straighten that. There you go. All right. So oh, here's got a question. I don't know if Sue's asking it, but is anyone remember the name of the round brush ginger had last night? Um, it's here, and uh, uh, again, it's right here. And this was made uh, Robert Simmons. Um, that was a number eight, wasn't it? It was a number eight round, Robert Simmons. That's a good company, and 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 they've got some of their brushes. If you've ever seen their um, warranty, some of them they're warranted for life. So I'm not sure how that works, but that's a, I don't know if that particular one is. But uh, anyway, so that there, there you go, right? So now we're going to do something with the trees. So we got to make some green, but we you know. Um, Let's take some phthalo blue and ultramarine blue and come over here and then let's add some yellow to it and make a green color, all right? And let's start with the dark green. Now, what yellow is that? Is that's that yellow? cad yellow medium. That's your standard yellow. Okay, even though the label says yellow oxide. I just want no, to No, this sure. is yellow oxide here. Okay. And that's cad yellow medium. Gotcha. Does it say yellow oxide there? Oh, good point, John. Let's move that label over here. Don't you love the little labels? And I, I should put it. <laughs> yeah, that's yellow. Oh, gosh, you're right. Just, just mine like a steel trap, don't you? All I'll right, tell so you, not even rusty. All right, so now I'm using just the corner of this brush like this, and I'm going to. St we're we're starting to. Add, spring's coming, man. Summer's coming. We're just starting to um, put in now some you're of just these. Using the corner of that brush. Just the you? corner of the brush. I'm doing some dark green because again, I just don't want to talk too much about this. I don't know if I even want to see this part of the tree. I may put it back here, like that, and I'm going to come over here like this. So I wasn't too worried about the clouds because I want to come down from the top and I suggest... I really like those clouds, too. I love these little angle brushes because there's so much you can do with them. Now, there's just so long, you know, there's so many little brush strokes it takes to do this. But basically what we're going to say, so we're just doing some leaves in groups like this. And we have enough little branches. We can come back and put them back. But we're just, we start with the darkest colors first on this. Okay, like this, coming this way. I think I want these to meet in the middle like that. All right, so now we're going to come up here like this, come down here like this, and maybe come over here like this, up here like this. And I'm overlapping. Please notice that I'm overlapping the brush strokes, but they're still little brush strokes. This is hard for a lot of people to paint that. This is very impressionistic painting. Sometimes it's hard for people to paint like this. But w th this is the first thing we're doing is just sort of over overlapping all this, right? Now this is what I would call, this is what I would call a sketch, all right? In that it's not necessarily a completed painting, but we are going to finish it. But I'm getting ideas of how I might want to do something larger. And there's no paint. Don't paint something 16 by 20 or 30 by 40 until you figure out how you're going to paint it, right? Do all the stuff, that, everything, you know, get your ideas and do something small and then see how it goes, right? Again, this is what Ginger does. Every time she does a lesson for you guys, she'll do this first, design it, to figure it out. So you're seeing a little bit behind the scenes of yeah, what goes into creating a lesson for you. Yeah, I mean, just how would you do it, right? I mean, how would you create this? And where, you know, maybe I want, um, I want something growing. Oh, could you tell us what, may, like, what, what did you use for your green again? Okay, so this is my standard green. Th phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, uh, cad yellow, medium, and um, a little burnt umber makes a really nice dark green. So the burnt umber is the one that's really dark. Yeah, the burnt umber is what darkens it. Yeah, you always start, remember, if it's on this side of the grayscale, the dark side of the grayscale, which it would be, you start with blue first. Gotcha. Okay, not yellow. Don't start with yellow. You'll never get it dark, you'll never get it light, you know, light enough, right? So now I think I'm liking this, and I'm going to put a little bit of red with that, and a little more blue. 
the red will, the cad red medium will sort of make it turn it into a dark olive color. I'm going to go over this base color here, and I think I want to just create some sort of little plant growing along this part of this barn here, like that. Maybe come up like this. And I'll just kind of go over this underpainting now. All I had was just sort of a dark and light thing, like that. Now I'm going to take some um, mixing white, all right, and a little bit of yellow. And I want a lighter green with a little tiny bit of orange in it. Can you guys see me mixing this? You can't. Oh, can no, you? it's all right. You can, can't. All right, so well, here's, yeah. the, here's a little bit of the cadmium medium in that. Remember, red tones down green because it's opposite green on the color wheel. So I've got this sort of olive green coming, right? And I want to just say that in here, like this, I'm just going to just suggest that there's some sort of... Um, you know, green growing like there, and maybe something behind here like that, maybe a little yellow oxide behind here too, I might lighten that up, behind here like this, and um, uh, uh, and I want it a little bit lighter in the front, so I'll add a little bit of zinc white to that, right, like that, and lighten it up a little bit in front, right, in here like this, and let's just pull some, using the same brush, let's just pull some grass growing up in front of here like that, like that, let's just uh, kind of, here, here's some dark grass here like this, there you go, let's just get something growing up like that. So we don't want to talk about the front of this barn. This is sort of an old abandoned barn, and we're just going to say that there's some grasses growing up like that, a little bit lighter, okay? And now a little bit more white to that, titanium, let me show you what happens when you add titanium. If I said I wanted a little bit lighter back here, and over in front of here, I can do that too. All right, so there, I've got a little bit of light behind the barn, a little bit of this. Now, I'm looking at this tree going, I don't like where it's not, it's not fat enough there for me. So as I look at this and I look at the monitor, I'm saying I got it wide, this wide here, so I have to bring it down here. I got to make this wider here. Do you see that? I can't have it that wide there. And, um, so that, so th this is what you have to look at when you're designing something. Okay, so we were talking about something kind of funny here. What were we talking about, John, earlier? I was I explaining all this, right? Okay, so um, I'm going to just add some flowers and stuff to this, but let's just keep going here. All right, so moving along, um, I need some light green. So taking some yellow oxide into this green that we just made, right? I need a lighter green. Now here's what's happening. The light green is on top. So let's add a little more thalo blue to that. Maybe a little bit of a cad yellow medium, a little tiny yellow oxide. Let's just lighten up this green a bit. Now, now here's the lighter green on top of my trees. Do you see that? The dark was underneath, like that, and the lighter green sits on top. All right, so the, the darker, so always the underneath color is always the darkest color. All right, and then we're putting the lighter green on top, like that. If you could only get one ruby satin silver brush, what one would you get? If I only could get one, I'd get a, a I'd get a, um, it, it, it's a, this one's a um, half inch. I think I'd get a quarter inch ruby satin silver angle short handle. Because I think you're gonna love those angles and then try to get all the angles, right, you angle brushes. A, yeah, because you do anything with them. Yeah, because you can do anything with them and they're, and they're so handy, right? And they're only like seven dollars. They're not a lot of money. We're not talking gobs of money here. That, uh, that brush like that shouldn't be more than seven, eight dollars, right? You know, that's not even a hamburger and a s and soda at McDonald's. Not to saying anybody eats there, but I'm just saying if one did eat there, that's what it would be, right? And the, how do you know that? I don't know how I know that. I, I know, know these that. things. I know these mm. things, right? Yeah. All right. We so all right. Now you see how I'm starting to add. Now I I'm looking at this going. What I think I want now that I'm seeing this whole picture is I think I want more of this tree up in here, this, you know, we're just going to say, we're going to bring this tree all the way to the top here, come and bring it down, some of these leaves here like that, down toward our barn, right? Have it pretty dark. So I don't know that we cared at all that about, about the sky. And, and now I'm looking at this going, okay, so I've got this tree coming up this way like that, and I can add some more branches. See that? I mean, you can, we can add more, more stuff, right? And... I'm looking at this here. Now what happens is, if I'm looking at these, but I'm going to just break this up like this between this tree like that. So another, 
In other words, it's going to have some branches coming in front of that, right, like that. And let's take a little bit of yellow here, okay. All right, let's just break that up. So I'm going to sort of, I sort of break, broken up these two big lines that are taking your eye out of the picture, right. And I'm adding some more greens, okay. Adding some more greens like that, okay. Now what? Well, all right, so that's a start, okay, that's, that's a start, but we're not anywhere near close to this or what we want. So moving along, I need to make this roof a little shorter, so I'm going to take some of my um, gray color and just skinny that up there, see? And I like that gray color, where else could I put that? Oh, maybe I'll add a little of that gray right here to my barn here in a couple places. Dry brush it on, just a couple places, not too much maybe around this window here, a little dry brush that on a little bit, because remember acrylics dry darker, okay? All right, acrylics dry darker. All right, so we've started to layer more colors. And I'm still not happy with this tree. Really? No, I'm not happy with that tree yet, but that's okay. I, I'm, I'll think about that. See, what you've got to do is when you're doing something like this, you just kind of have to give it some thought and say, well, what, what do you think you might want to do next? And I think what I want to do next here is sort of have an end to this barn. A little burnt sienna here, have a little, uh, let's see, let's pinch the brush, well, that means I squeeze it. You squeeze the brush, and I had a bunch of light paint on there, so let me rinse it all off. Here, just squeeze it like that. So you get it flat, okay, and then I'm going to come up here, both sides like that, so it's flat. Now the paint, there's no big globs on this. Then I'll come down here using just the knife and blade of this. And I'll just say that there's the edge of this, like that. And there we go. Okay, so there's the edge of that barn. And that's, um, that's okay. That's, that works pretty well for me at this point, all right? And uh, as long as I'm, I want a light edge right here like this. And um, so far, so good. Okay, so now what could be interesting? Well, you know, what if we had, I'm just saying, right? What if we had some flowers that were all up in here. What if this was all kind of wildflowers? That's kind of a nice thought, isn't it? Kind of an interesting thought. So what if we took some yellow and ultramarine blue will make kind of an army green, right? And we'll put a little bit of um, mixing white with it so it's not too, or zinc white, so it's not too much. And then let's just come up like this. And shorter ones, right? Like some shorter ones back here. Let's say some of this is lighter. I'm going to just bring some grasses down this way, like that, and we're going to plant this. What do you think? Okay, we're going to plant this section of our barn, and we may have to plant something back here too, but let's plant that for sure. Let's get a real dark green going back up this way to kind of cross over that. Like that, there you go, okay. Now, I could put some flowers up here, and that would be sort of nice. And I'm still seeing this chalk right here. Do you see that where I did the chalk? Yep. I don't know. I'll just uh, take some brown and just uh, get rid of this. Let's just bring the barn out a little further. Probably as easy as any. There, okay. The light source is coming from the right on this particular Yeah, the page. light source is coming from the right. Okay, so I made that a little bit darker right there. Kind of like that anyway, don't you? There you go. All right. So kind of you don't see that anymore, okay. And... Um, so I'm thinking, what else could I put in here? Well, you know, one thing, to me, what I would put in here, and it'll, look, we're making it up together, right? We're making it up, right? Is that this corner, what if we had a rain barrel right here? Now, of course, it would be good. If you wanted a rain barrel, the best thing to do would be to hit Google Images and find photos of rain barrels, right? But, you know, we had rain barrels when I was a kid. Not that, uh, you know, my mother had one. Because she had them on her ranch in Yakima. Ours was, um, it was a real rain barrel, but nobody used it for anything. I mean, you could technically, what people used to do with rain barrels, for those of you who maybe aren't, um, uh, aren't familiar with that, what people used to do with rain barrels is um, they would um, collect the rain water, and it usually it would come under an eave like this. It would, you know, drop down from the roof, right? They would collect, they would collect the rain, rain and then... Um, even though they had indoor plumbing, and they would use, it's soft water, it's really soft water. So this is before air, air, air conditioners, okay? 
So this is before there were any conditioners for your hair. All right. So what they would do is then collect the rain and then use it to it's a rinse on your hair. Rinse your when you shampooed your hair. Isn't that cool? Did you know that, John? I did know that. I knew rainwater was the bestest. Yeah, so you know, or maybe they wash their dog, who knows? But they wash something with it, right? All right, so I'm gonna lighten up thy blue again a little bit right here by my rain barrel, okay? Maybe a little bit up here on the roof here like that. There you go. Okay, so there's our there's our barn. It's getting cuter, right? I mean, it started off pretty just hideous, and I got to say you that that's this is this is this is designing a painting. Now let's back us up here. Let's let's just, just talk about where we started. We started with this, okay? And then we um, we had a big old tree coming out of it, and then we decided. I mean, just to just review here, and then we kind of edited the picture. So we don't need that tree. What if we put it behind? Okay, so we did that, right? It looks okay. a lot better behind. It looked a little better behind, and now we've added a rain barrel. Now I gotta have to dry that, okay? Sorry, just we gotta dry as we go, right? You with that? Yes, go. Well, pre-warning that time on the drying condition. Now, uh, can't really do anything about the YouTube not getting our feed. We're on Xfinity. We've got like 12 gigabyte upload, 12 megabyte upload. It only needs two to give high definition. We're pushing it out. I don't know what to tell you there other than YouTube. Uh, when it plays back, sometimes if it has a big spot that's missing, it'll just be a blip. But it'll, you'll be able to catch up what's going on. All right, so all right, so we, right, all right. So now we, remember we got the light coming from this way. So let's take a little burnt sienna, a little yellow oxide. We're using the same colors here. Haven't, haven't gone too crazy on you, okay? Now we're gonna come here like this, using the side of this brush like this. We're going to just, um, Paint the um, the up and down. You know, I mean that the, they've got this um, up and down stays. I think they call them stays, don't they? I would call them wood. Well, the wood things that go up and down to make a barrel, right? Yeah. Now, as we come around a little further, we'll add a little bit of purple to that brown color, and it'll get a little darker as we come this way. All right. So that's our. Um, all right. Now. Okay, so already it looks a little more barrel-like, all right? Now, I'm just going to take a little bit of white and using this brush like this. There you go. So I want to make sure this is up and down, okay? All right, like that. So th uh, now, th the thing about when you're doing stuff like this, you've got to dry between things, right? If you start fooling around with white, you have to just dry it before you come back with something dark, okay? So I'm going to just say the top of this is a little lighter. I've got the corner of this brush here. Top of this is a little lighter, like that. And I still want this like that, a little bit lighter here, right? All right, so I'm going to just bring the grass up to that very lightly up to our barrel, right up here to the front of it, like this. Here's the front of this barrel, like that. And I'm going to lighten up the grass here, OK? So, see what I just did? Because wherever there's a light, there's a dark. And then there's some sort of darker green shadow going on here behind the barrel. And maybe, maybe against where this, um, uh, this wood would be. Because, I mean, you got, you know, maybe back here there's a little darker shadow right back here where the barrel is on this wood right there. Right? There's a little shadow right there. Probably should have put a little brown with it. Okay, so now I'm not still light enough. So I think I want to age this wood a little bit. Maybe. Um, I'm going to just add some more white. I'm going to add, I want to age the wood because I'm still not happy with how light this is, okay? And this is pretty little. This would be a much bigger, it more interest, easier painting to do large, but I don't want to do it large because I'm just going to suggest this light barrel here, all right, like that. I don't want to do it large until, um, uh, until I've, I decide if I like the design or not. This is what, you know, to, does the design work? Because you've got to ask yourself this before you waste a lot of paint. I see people often tell me how expensive painting is, and I certainly, I for one know that it's it's not an inexpensive hobby. You know, I don't know that it's more more expensive than golf, but um, but it's certainly it's not an inexpensive hobby. You know, if anybody's uh, other half is talking about these things, right? But um, it's still it's not inexpensive, and. So the trick is get your design down first. Understand how you're going to paint something first. Now there's a little yellow oxide. Well, even like in this particular one, you used your computer first to start playing with the ideas, putting things together, spacing. Yeah. 
I did. Things like that, so. I did. I used the computer first. And then, she, and then, then she decided, okay, let's try an 8x10 of it before she does a 1620 or 2024. Yeah, or let's just try it and see what if I, you know, because you know what? If I don't like it, now this is fair. If I don't like it, right, then I won't make a bigger one. See what I mean? Or I wouldn't make a bigger one. But I need to do it smaller first. I just needed that a little bit lighter right there. And that's not as light as I want it. So here we go. I want this, I want this edge to be pretty light right here on the wood. Okay. All right, I can zoom back over there. So a little bit lighter. And then I got to dry this little barrel here. Okay, you ready for that? Uh, go. Um, have John painted yet? No, I have not painted yet. I finally got caught up on my video that um, Oregon Coast took 60 hours of editing and that put me way behind. So I am going to start. I, I did watch the lesson, the warming up the brushes which is going to be reshot after I watched it. But it's a good lesson. If, if you remember and have not seen that, that is well worth looking at because you have to know how to use the tools. And she goes into it. Yeah, thanks, John, for that because that's important. Now I'm using a three zero 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 um, triple zero uh, triple zero a little round brush, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and just give a little detail here on the top of my barrel here. Now this is curving around like this. See? See how we're curving? These are the, I guess these are the stays. That's what they now call see, the I stays. I would call those the bands. The bands? <laughs> okay, well then what are the stays? The stays are the I things that no go idea. up and down. The stays are the things, I bet somebody else knows. The stays are the things that go up and down. Um, just saying, right? So now I want to come under this with a little bit of a dark line. This is where being able to put re reading glasses on would be extremely helpful. <laughs> Just Soon, saying. I understand tomorrow might be the day. Yeah, tomorrow I think I can have these sunglasses off with the next live class. All right, now, look, the light's coming from here. So obviously you can't have white going all the way around it, right? Can obviously. You? you can't. But so what do you do? But you have to start with that first. This is the trick. You've got to start with the white first, right? Here's the top of our barrel, right? Got to start with the white first, and then, um, and you see, you'll see me constantly do this with the brushes. I will constantly be um, just trying to see this a little better here. I'll constantly, you know, be um, pinching the brush. Okay. Pinching the brush. Pinching the brush. All right. So there's. All right. So what oh, I have no, to do. Wait, wait, wait. Now, here's a very unusual question. Yes. I, I'd like to hear the answer. How many hours of painting can a triple zero brush be used before needing to be replaced? Um, you know, it probably could last you forever if you didn't let it sit in the water. Probably. You know, if you cleaned if you all the paint of out of it there all the time. And just yeah. didn't, what mo happens to most of these brushes, and quite frankly, and it's, it's sort of sad, but the truth is what happens to most of them is, right, is that um, you... Um, abuse them. You abuse them. I don't think I could ever do airbrush because the paint would always be stuck in the gun because I have a tendency that, the, you know, as artists we get busy, so, you know, the door rings, you didn't think about it, the doorbell rang. No, you just had a brilliant moment, that's all. It was a brilliant you, moment. You, yeah, you had a brilliant moment, could have been that. Hey, staves are the wooden part. Thank you, BKBRP64. Yeah, see, I that thought so. That sounds like a CB handle, doesn't it? Stays, yeah. Okay, so let's just let's just, let's just straighten up this barrel a little bit, right here on the edge, right. All right, so it started to look more like a barrel, right? It's looking like a great barrel. And then you know, get remember wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So I've got to still put the top on here like that. Okay, and then I'm going to just using titanium here for this one. I can always glaze it back if I get it too much, and this is why you want to sand the canvas because if you have to screw around with stuff like this, having a having a canvas that's been sanded is helpful. Right. Thank you, Dorothy, for being with us until 3 a.m. Oh gosh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you're going, and she's, and for, you know, and but you know, you're oh, learning. Right. I guess what you're doing here. I she's guess keeping what we're my saying, hours. That's what I like to see. Yeah, John stays up really late and answers all kinds of questions from our members. Now look, there's a little yellow oxide over that. See, you think you know we don't fool around with this. This is the there's a little yellow oxide here. It's a little bit right here on this edge. Here, gonna just there we go. See, a little bit on the barrel. See, it's coming along at the barrel. Now, let's play with the grass. Let's play with these um, flowers. Let's put some flowers in here, right? Just just for the fun of it, just for some yucks. For let's some push. yucks. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. What are yucks? <laughs> chuckles. Oh, chuckles. You didn't say that? Was it good just for some yucks? 
That wasn't one of your expressions? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just come up here and suggest. Oh, I love those. I'm going to just suggest some sort of little flowers growing so here. So you did, a, you did a combination of two colors in there on the brush at one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yellow and, and cad red medium, and I didn't mix it very well. I like and I'm just going to say up here that there's some, I'm going to just bring some flowers in the foreground to make this a little bit funner. I don't know if it wasn't fun to begin with, but let's just, let's just say, right? It's you only 4 a.m. for uh, Norway. Oh, gosh, Norway. And <laughs> we, we, we love you. Thank you, right? Because, you know, um, and then I'm looking at this going, this is why you want all these brushes going. I like this bright orange, but I might take that I just made, right? With this cad red medium and cad yellow medium, right? I love that color. So what if I came up here like this? Oh, wait. And what if I just added just something a little bit of lighter here, a little bit of brighter orange? What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Well, you were, went up. We were down in the bottom. I'm in the bottom shooting you. Then all of a sudden, this is why my problem is when I edit your videos, you're down in one little corner, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, you go to the total other end of the canvas. It's a mile away on a 30-incher. Yeah, I can see yeah. why that could be a problem. Yeah, and you really care, don't you? I do, I do. I, I just, <laughs> but I have a creative moment. You see? Yes, you did. I have a now, creative is that moment. considered a ginger surprise? No, was it? Well, color I, that's a little color surprise. We put yeah. a little bit up there. Now we're going to switch colors. We're going to get some other flowers in here. Let's get some yellow ones in. And at this point, Ginger has to put more yellow out because she's mixed it all with something. All right. So How does Ginger store her painting? Does she cover them? No, we hang them on no, the wall. No, we just hang them on the wall. All right. So now we're taking a little bit of white, uh, zinc white, and a little yellow, right? Oh, should I probably come over to where Now you're let's going. just come over here. We're down here, right? Zooming in. I'm coming down. All right. Now we're just going to do some little kind of daisy things here like this. I was going to say that looks like a daisy. You know, we're just, we're just, we're just tapping it, you know. If this is were bigger, you might have to actually paint the daisy in. One nice thing about uh, small little pictures, you know, I'm keeping them almost flat. I just want some little flowers up here like this. Now I'm going to take a little yellow oxide in yellow. Okay, I'm going to make some a little brighter in the front like this. A little yellow oxide, a little bit of cad yellow medium. We're going to make some brighter ones up here. Just, just, and just some, remember, it's thick and thin, smaller, bigger. Don't forget to overlap. Okay, and we're going to just say here's some tiny ones up here. They're way back here, so they're not very big. Dot, 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 dot. See, they got smaller. Things get smaller as they go far, get farther away. Okay. And then, I, I mean, I like those, right? And then, I, then maybe I'd want some white ones, some sort of little white ones. So I might take a little ultramarine blue and white. And just so they're sort of off-white, not quite white, but they are pretty much white. Okay. And I'm going to come in here like this and suggest some little white flowers. Okay. Let's just come up here like that. Just little dotty little white flowers. Like that. We're just going to put some in here. This is our picture. We're making this up as we go, right? Okay. So we put some in here like that. Okay. Yeah, all right, so I'm liking those. Now let's get some little darker blue ones going. And purple, maybe. Let's have refocus that. Now, can you refocus? Is this out of focus? It seems to be a little bit. I just want to see if I can get it any better. Kind of just tone those down, 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 down a bit, okay? Put a little purple. Down. All right, so John's, John's focusing the camera. You took it off of auto. Okay. All right, so now if you back me up from this a minute, right? I've got a different plan for this picture now. I just want you to see how I've got this different oh, plan, yeah. right? So I'm going to come around this tree like this and suggest a little path going up to our barn. What do you think? I like it. So I'm just saying it wouldn't have to be, and it will have to put some shadows and stuff on it. But here's a little path to the barn, right, that we got. There's a little path. And as it comes on, you know, maybe on this side of the um, uh, road, it's going to be a little bit, um, oops, ooh, what happened there? <laughs> there, well, uh, I'm telling you what, painting with sunglasses is a challenge, friends. All right, so we're going to say this is a little path, and if it's a path, which we just said it was, okay, so where's the burnt umber? Yeah, we're all out of that. Don't, don't run out of paint too quick, right? We're letting those flowers dry so we can put some green stuff in them. But in the meantime, we're going to say that that was a path there, right? So there's probably a shadow 
running across the path like this from this tree. There would be, you know, sorry. Like that, some of the trees. So you, you're with me there? And then there's a pattern. Maybe there's a hoot. That's burnt umber and um, ultramarine blue. And let's say that maybe there's, we're going to come this way. How do we get the blue in there? It's all right. It doesn't matter. We're, we're, we, we'll overcome it. All right. Let me just say that there's some shadows going this way on here. Okay. So our path. Okay. So now we, we, we've created a light. What we're doing is we're letting you follow the light into the, into the barn. So we sort of created that. And... Um, All right, so then we, we need some bright green things up this way, some brighter greeny fun things up this way. So um, let's um, let's just pull some this way like that, some sort of bright green. And I think we need something growing up on the side. I, I think our barn is so old it should have some weeds around it. Okay, so I'm going to make a different green now and create that. And all right, so we need we need something growing up on our barn here like this, and um, like you know just there. Let's just get the the bottom of the barn going there like that, something like that. And of course, there would still be some sort of lighter green on top of that. So maybe we'll just suggest something growing up on the barn like this around our barn. Like that. Okay. Now you've kind of backed it out of there. So are we, we've created, are, we're creating a sort of an interesting picture. Not quite that great yet, but we're getting there. And this is, this is the process. All right. So I'm going to say this has got to be a t taller up here like this. I've got to have this going up into the tree a bit. Maybe even take this off the canvas on this side, right? Got to, got to make that darker. And then maybe I even want some, um, um, tree roots crossing over here too. I could, you know, like that. Do you ever use a script brush for grasses? A what, what? A script brush? Um, well, I mean, the round ones are kind of a, n not so much. Um, you mainly use those, um, the angles. All right, so I've got to, we're going to have to create a fairly decent, this tree is big enough where it really requires a fairly good branch coming up here like this. It can disappear into the tree, but it does require some sort of branch we got to suggest that something happened with this tree. And you can't just have a brown tree here, so you're going to have to have some sort of um, um, highlights on it, right? Just like we did on this one. So since, that, since we're not going to see that much of it, we're going to just create a little bark like that. We'll just create some bark on this. Just some burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow oxide. We're just going to create some bark on this tree. Let's put a little white with this. We thought about it. You know, I thought about it. You know, about the advantage to showing you how, how you might create, a, you know, how you might create something. Do we want a little bit of a tree root growing this way? Do we want to say that there's one? Do we want to have a little tree root coming out like that? And, and where would it be? I mean, and then you've got to ask yourself, what can I take away and not ruin the effect? You know, there's always that rule, okay? And, you know, so, but if I said that there was a little tree root coming this way on this, that's a little brighter, but I can glaze it over, all right? I can say there's a little tree root coming there. And I, I want something very light here. Now, phthalo blue and yellow make a very, very bright kind of Irish spring green that's really brighter than anything you want. So you've got to tone it down. And, uh, and some of you, if you're using phthalo green to, to make bright, colors in your picture, this is a not a good plan, okay? You can use brown to tone down a green, um, you, you know, but you, you need it, you can't have just this bright um, golf course green, you know, you want, it, you want to kind of avoid that. So I want to just say, I want to bring up some brighter stuff here coming this way, and I'll add some white to this this lighter green. I want a lighter green here, but on the other hand, um, I want to just bring something up here from the bottom. This is dried enough to just suggest these are some sort of wildflowers growing here, right? 
and there like that, okay? So then I put that in there and I'll get it a little bit lighter in a couple places. Maybe I'll just take the top of my brush here and tap in some little flowers that are growing up on there like that. Something like that, just to suggest that there's something coming up this way. All right, so now, let's see, can you back me up a bit, John? You, you got back it, boss. Up? All right, so we're going to back this up, and then I'm looking at this going, now this is the thing, how long have we been into this project, by the oh, way? Oh, about an hour 30. About an hour 30. Okay, so, you know, all right, so I need this a little darker under here. Under under, under under my um, window. Hmm. I, I need it a little bit darker under here like this. You know, that's, that's, I'll darken that blue under here just a little bit, all right? And then I'll take some yellow and, um, and red, make a little orange color, and maybe just add a little more color there like that. But I wanted that a little darker, okay? And... Um, Maybe I'll add a little bit of this orange color into the tree. That might be interesting, too, because I'm trying to... Um, I'm just looking at the overall finished picture of this and, um, and my tree bark here. Okay. All right, so there we go. Now, so far... Okay, so if I take cad red medium, straight cad red medium now, and add a few dots of that to my front flowers. Like, not all of them, just like one or two, right? Okay, so I've brightened a couple of those up. And then I might suggest, um, back along our barn here, might I suggest something that's lighter? Lighter, here we go. I just want something lighter behind the barn, if I have to add some lighter green. Because acrylics dry darker, I want to suggest behind this barn back here, it's lighter behind those trees, like that, right? Like that, so it's a little bit lighter there, and I want to lighten it up here, okay? Just say that there's something growing in the front. Lighten this up down here in the front. See, I'm starting to kind of create a little path here, okay? And uh, now, what was in this picture that was sort of interesting was the fact that... Um, you remember, where's our photograph? Where'd it go? Ah, here. Was that, even though, the, see, do you see these shadows across the, the roof? That was sort of interesting, wasn't it? Kind of. And then there was this old part of the barn that was falling apart. I love that. Let's put that in. Let's put this old part of the barn that was falling apart. Okay, good. Let's do that. All right, so now we're going to take some, let's see, I'll get some burnt umber and ultramarine blue, okay? And I'm going to come here like this, and I'm going to create this dark, so maybe a little purple here. I'm going to create this dark little area right here at an angle, like that. A little bit of purple and white. Okay, I'm going to come down here like this with that and suggest that this barn is sort of, well, it's falling apart like a cheap suit, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so, I mean, so, so that's at an odd angle. So if you're going to put that there, if you're going to say that that happened, all right, and let's just put some little lighter blue on it, too. If you're going to say that this happened to this piece of board, you're going to have to really explain it. All right, so let's get a little purple going on here, like that in white. Causing purple and white. Okay, so I'm going to explain it. There's this um, kind of purple edge. It's coming down from the top. We're starting to see more colors now. And then underneath it, because it's going to cause a shadow here, so let's, underneath it, it's going to be really dark. Like right underneath this, it will be extremely dark right under here like that. There'll be a shadow, and there'll be a shadow here. So that orange was fun, but it has to go. Okay. Now, white. And we're starting to use up a lot of paint. So, okay, so there we go. That's it. Now, see, see how I've lightened this up, so it's kind of sticking in front. Now, here, again, we're going to just lighten it up here a little bit more. 
So this is, this is falling down, this little piece of wood is falling down like that. And now you look at that. Now, it's, it, now here's the deal. It reads really well in the photo, doesn't it? Hmm? Well, what is that in the photo? Well, it's a part of the, you know, the siding's falling down, kind of like what's coming. It's, see, it's siding down. So here's the thing. I'm looking at this. Does it read well in my picture? No, it just looks like I painted the barn wrong. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is one of the reasons why you do these sketches ahead of time, all right? You do these sketches ahead of time, all right? Now, that, I can't say that enough. You do these sketches ahead of time. and All, all your pictures came from paint knife. Pay my photos? Well, they don't all, they, these ones did today, but they yeah. don't all come from no, here. No, we're yeah. talking about these. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, these did. All right. So I'm going to put it back down because that didn't add anything. All right? That didn't add a thing to the picture. See what I mean? It didn't add anything. Now, the, the yellow and the orange added something. But the, you know, the, the orange color had definitely added something. So, I mean, I like the orange on the barn like this, like that. I like a little of that color on here, even over the, see, even that's pretty, right, on this barn. And I like a bit, little bit brighter, maybe. I'm just pinching the brush off and then saying, here's a little bit of that, okay, like over here, like that. Dry brushed on. This is called dry brushing, okay. And then I might want to say, I want to just kind of brighten it up a little bit on the top, okay. Up here, like this, on the top of this barn, like up here, like this, I want it a little bit darker, okay. And I'm, I still am looking at this going, all right, so what, what can I take away here and not ruin the effect? What can I take away and not ruin the effect? And where, where can my lights and darks be? So we're going to go back again with some lights that are going to be creeping around here like this. Okay. And, and there you go, like that, so that the barn shows up, right? And add a little bit of light here like that. Just, just suggest it's... It's, there's a tree here it's causing shadows you know but there's there's some light there so we're going to pull some light around so that the barn shows up um, I don't think we have enough uh, we definitely do not have enough um, uh, you're looking at this I don't think we either have we either don't have enough leaves or we have too many now, really? you, you can go either one way or the other. You either have to have more leaves or less. I vote for more. You know? So, like, for instance, here, like, for instance, right here, and I'm going to just say, I think we have a fan going that's driving my paint out really quickly. Well, I somebody a, asked me to turn the fan on. Oh, there goes the water sprayer. Do you need it? Yeah, probably. Can Pick you grab it, it for me? Yep. Thank you. All right, I'm going to just tap this down in here and just make these a little smaller, these little flowers. Add some more green here and just make those tiny bit smaller. So I thought they were too big. Thank you, thank you. And I'm going to miss my paint. Th these little sprayers things, you don't want to miss your paint because, you know, I've got like wind blowing on mine, right? Okay. I'm going to miss the paint. And now I've said that this tree is in front. Now, in the picture, you had this this tree was just here growing out of the side of the barn, but I moved it. I moved it in front, okay? So then, what happened there? Well, you know, um, what's happened is, is that you've got this tree is in front of the barn here. Do you see that? This tree, it, it has to be in front. If it's in front of the barn, then it has to be in front of the barn. Does that make sense? So, if I'm saying that that tree is in front of the barn, then I've got to go ahead and put a branch in like that. And because I changed, I changed the whole picture. Just see what I mean? So now I push the barn back just by putting this branch here. And I'm going to say that this came up like this, and this is turning here. Now, if, if you've dried everything as you go, right? If you've dried everything as you go, and let's see, I want a little thinner brush, which I put where? That little tiny, where did I put that little tiny one? If you've dried everything as you go, then this shouldn't be a problem. You want to just, you know, and if you've got, so for instance, I can come in here like that. 
and just erase anything that's too much, right? Just come back here and erase it. Now, now look what the difference made when I added this branch. Do you see, do you see the difference it made? I'd say this, this, this branch is now in front of, I had, this, there had to be a branch in front of this tree. Can, can, do you understand what I'm saying? There had to be a branch. Once you change one thing, man, you have changed everything. Okay, so we're going to say that there's a branch in front of this tree like this. It's coming this way. And um, maybe we got something coming this way. And um, like that. All right, now. There you go. I mean, just saying that that's that's what ha that's what has to ha happen. So, is this branch too heavy? Is it too thick? D does it have some light or dark on it? You know. Um, n now we're getting into kind of an interesting kind of a gray area, right? Would I want this branch here? Do I want it here? Should I put it here? Um, there's some highlights on it. Here it's coming here. We've got some highlights on this tree here. Okay, like this. Here's our branch. And then it probably will have some leaves. Does that, does that make sense, John? Yeah. Do you see what happened when I had to put this in front? Because otherwise, the tree had flat. to be... Yeah, well, the tree either is in front of the barn or it isn't. All right? right. So if it's in front of the barn, I, and I know this sounds barn. crazy, but this is the stuff you've got to think about when you're designing a painting. And you've just got to think about it, and you're going to go, well, um, this, it's going to have some uh, brighter green leaves, right? On, on the, on the um, you know, let's, let's get some green going here. With the, you know, let's make some green. Let's, 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 let's start with the dark one. There's going to have some leaves on here like this. Maybe I'll come in front like that, but there's got to be some leaves, okay? And if you were to take a black and white picture of this right now, would it all be the same color? That's what you can ask yourself that. You've got a cell phone. Do you guys know how to do that? Take a black and white picture of what you're doing? You guys, you know? Make sure you have enough contrast. You know, you, because look, if, 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 if this were a black and white picture, would the barn show up even? You know, would these branches show up? But already it looks a little bit better. Maybe I would even have, you know, I mean, and these these almost look like, um, ooh, this is pretty. This almost looks like shadows going across the roof of our barn, doesn't it, from the tree? So then, you know what I mean? There's almost, it could be shadows like that. All right, coming across the roof of the barn, that's sort of interesting. Um, You've got a, you can't see that you can't see that green, can you? Uh, so now I'm going. Let's see, where do we do with the thalo? We had the thalo out a minute ago. Here. All right. So let's put a little thalo. Let's brighten the let's brighten the green leaves on the top of the barn. So that's why we might use the thalo blue and the yellow, and a little tiny bit of burnt umber, just a little tiny bit, and maybe titanium white. Okay. And let's make a little bright green color like that a little more white and again when you start running out of paint put some more out okay now okay so now I'm going to say that there is my leaves that are coming on my brighter leaves here like this coming down from here I don't want to talk about this branch at all so I'm just going to cover it up all right, just don't even want to discuss this one, okay? So now, all right, so now you've got brighter leaves here coming over the front from this tree of the barn. And it also breaks up this long line, all right? So I don't know, I just, I feel bad, John. We've just, I feel like I should spend like another couple hours on this. This well, again, this, this is a sketch, and this is what you're working out before you do that. This is one. what you work out before you... Um, can you imagine you get, doing this on a 30 by 40 or something? You, know, something you, you big? try to work this out before you get before you get too high. You know, you know, you know, you're sitting there saying, you know, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. Maybe I want to put some more of these weeds things up in here in the front, kind of bring those a little closer, right, like that, okay? And um, you know, kind of little weedy things like coming up this way, 
and um, um, I might want something a little darker. I, and again, this is all goes back to wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So I keep looking around this picture going, if um, there's my barrel, if I made some darker grass next to it, would it show up? Huh? And it does, see? J j just that. Now the barrel shows up a little bit, okay? Yeah. And then um, let's, let's, let's lighten up this green even more by adding some white. Uh, might have to dry it, but I'm just saying, adding some white to the green. Let's, let's brighten that up a little bit more here. Uh, that's, it would be titanium white, not mixing white or, or zinc. Okay, now, all right, so brighten this up. Okay, so already, I mean, I have to tell you, I like this better when we put the tree in front, okay? So, now, right, so let's just, okay, now again, all right, what happened? We're starting to add lights and darks. A a adding a bit of something here, that adding a bit of lights. Could you throw in some sunflowers? I mean, you can get it really busy, but the idea is that, you know, the idea isn't changing here. All right, so, so far, I'm, I'm okay here. Now, and we haven't done much of anything to the sky, except, um, you know, because the sky is gray. So you wouldn't want, like, a bright blue sky or something because you've got this funny old barn. So then we keep going back and forth with our colors. And... Um, what was pretty about this, I'm going to brighten up this blue here in the back now. Because remember, why is that so pretty next to this orange? Because it's a, because thalo blue, you know, turquoise blue and orange are complements. So if I do that, I'm brightening up this blue and maybe just coming up here on this roof like that. Okay. I'm going to brighten this up a little bit like that. That's pretty. Uh, Maybe I want to take some yellow and make a light orange color. Let's see if I've got any room to mix anymore. I like a big palette like this because you can keep moving around and mixing. I want my trees to show up. So I might have to lighten the roof in a couple places for that to happen. Because again, we keep going back to wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So there, it might lighten up that roof a little bit. So that's showing. Put a little, you know, put a little more red right here like this under here. Um, maybe I'll just dry brush some color in here like this. You guys know, you know, just have a little color left over on your brush and you just sort of tone down something or lighten it up. Now that's, you've got one of the choice or the other. You can tone it down or lighten it up. Maybe in this case I want to lighten it up. Lighten something up like this because your acrylics are drying darker. Okay, so we have any questions why I'm just rattling on here about what we're doing it? I spoke, nope, you've got Nobody agrees that that really brought the picture together, putting that branch there. They, they just seemed flat. It seemed something was off, and, 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 and that was it. And that's why, because you, cause you're saying that it had to come forward, right? The, the tree was in the front, you know, the trunk's in our nose, but there's nothing there to indicate that they weren't at the same level as the barn. No. Now, here, remember we kept a little bit of the sky color, right? I like the now, sky. Now, what you can do is you can go back and poke holes in your trees. Yeah, Did you know that birds leaves. should always be able to fly through your trees? Did you guys know that? Yeah, I've heard that. So, you know, I mean, if you've got, you know, maybe we did a lot of leaves here, right? So I told you we either had to add more leaves or have less leaves. Does that make sense? So you can come back and, you know, poke a few holes back in your trees in your leaves like that if you've got too many or you need to thin up a branch don't don't be afraid to do that you know thin up a branch like that don't be afraid to do it um i'm looking at uh, uh maybe a little yellow oxide back here in this field it's just a little bit of yellow oxide and white maybe and just keep playing and you're seeing what you know so then you're looking at that going well I got something lighter back here next to my roof, like, you know, next to this barn back here like that. Just a little bit lighter back there in the field. Just a touch. Not much, you know, but just back there. You can just go back and start either adding lights or not, okay? 
think I want a, a darker line right here to the edge of my building. Okay. Can add that. Just that doesn't hurt. Doesn't have to be perfect. And um, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that did make a difference, John. Just those small little things. And I said, so in review then, if you're talking about in reviewing what you wanna what you wanna do, and I can do that with the with the barn too, come back and add a few little holes in my leaves like that too, you know, but you can still have the branch there, right? What you wanna do is ask yourself these questions. Um, you know, what you know you know, you don't want a tree in the middle. What can I take away? What can I add? You know, what could ma what make would make it interesting? What can I take away? You know, where's my light source? Where's my wh you know what's dark? You know, there's a lot of things you have to keep in Th mind. You, there's a lot of things, and so people always want to design their own paintings. And people say, well, I don't understand why I should copy something that's you know when you go back and you copy a, a painting by an old master like a. Van Gogh, Renoir, and even say somebody like Thomas Kincaid, who was really an awesome, honest, awesome, uh, uh, artist, maybe somebody you admire, when you go back and you copy a picture like that, all you're thinking about then is how did they do the colors, how did they do the brush strokes. But if you have to, this is like composing music. How many pieces of music do you, how many times do you think somebody sat there in a studio and composed music <laughs> before they got a song they liked, okay? And that's, um, um, they sat there a long time. They probably just, you know, the song didn't come to them immediately. And this is how you work out the details on this kind of stuff. I guess that's what I'm saying here. Now I'm just putting in some more shadows down here on the roof, like that, you know, coming down here from the eaves, you know, putting a few more shadows. Uh, just going to kind of darken that little line up right there to kind of make it there. And, and quite frankly, um, I wouldn't paint this painting bigger. Now yeah. that I've designed it and I've looked at this, right, and I've looked at this, I I wouldn't make it I wouldn't make it bigger. What size is that? You did eight by ten. This is an eight by ten, right? And this would be you know, and I and I still probably need. I'll tell you what, I still probably need another hour of fooling around with this to to get it the way I like it, right? Because right now I wouldn't be happy with this. So it's okay. That's okay, but it doesn't do a thing for me. And that's all right, too. You've got to be able to sit there and say, well, you know, this is what I did. And, uh, you know, it doesn't do anything for me. I, it was a good idea, and I thought it was a great idea, and it wasn't, right? Now, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to come back up here like this. But this is dry a little bit. And lighten it up on the roof. See that? And that, that makes me happy. And tomorrow, what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'll play with this a little bit, and I'll show you tomorrow night what I do with this picture when I'm totally done. How's that? Because you like your other one better, the one you plan on doing for the class. Well, the, this one, yeah. But I mean, I worked on this for a long time before I got this one the way I wanted it. It's, I mean, you, I started off with this, and I like this a lot better. But I didn't get to this in an hour or two, no. right? I've, I've got several hours in this, and you won't necessarily get to what you want in an hour. And I don't mind showing you how to, I design something, and. Because you've got to be able to sit there and say, you know what, this didn't work for me. I don't like it. Even if three other people come along and go, oh, that's so pretty. I don't know why you don't like it. You've got to go with your own gut here, right? Yeah, it's your painting. It's your painting. You've got to go with your own gut. You, you, you be know? the artist. You're the artist, right? You've got to go with your own gut and, um, you know, and sit there and say, and, uh, you, know, what could I, you know, what could I do? See, already. You see what I'm doing? Already, I like that better. Now, I wouldn't keep it that bright orange. I'd make this an old uh, tin building. But already, I like a little awning right there, like an old tin thing that's sticking out from it, like that. And I already like that better. So again, this is sort of a design thing. I'd have to go back and work the design. I'd have to think about this tree for a minute, see if I wanted it. So this will be fun. I'll play with this tomorrow, you guys, and I'll show you what I do. And, um, and it may look completely different, but it will be kind of a two-part <laughs> thing. I'll show you what I'll do, and then tomorrow night we'll paint some flowers or paint something else. But I will show you how I finish this, and I might even film it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll film this tomorrow as I'm doing it and have it available for you guys to watch, all right, how I fix this.
Well, that would be cool. All right, so can I ask any questions before we say goodnight? Because I think we've kept everybody can up till wee hours of the morning long enough, you right? Can ask any questions? No, you want to answer questions. Yeah, that's what I said. Is that uh, that's what I heard. They probably heard it wrong. I'm sure they did. Yeah. Because, of course, that's what I meant, wasn't it? How many barns have you seen, never seen a barn with an awning? Well, you will now. Well, it's not an awning. It's just going to be an old shed. An old shed part. It's going to be you an old shed. You just have to wait and see what she does with it. You'll wait and see. You, yeah, you'll have to wait and see because it isn't necessarily, it's just going to be an old tin thing that's going to come up here. I'm just seeing if I like it, right? She's just so playing th around. So right now I'm just saying what would happen if I, if I added a shed off the back of this? See, I don't know. We'll see. But the thing about acrylics, which is not the same with watercolor, is you can sketch as you go. You can sketch as you go, and you've got all kinds of things that you can do that pe people just, you know, that, that what you can do is amazing, right? What you can do is amazing, but you've got to understand what your limits are, okay? All right, so we're going to say good night for this. I think that was kind of fun. I, and again, I'm going to show you where we started with and why we got to this point. And um, if you guys are happy, if you're liking barns, remember we've got this one is a completed barn on YouTube. This was sort of a funny one in the fall, fun one to do. That was like a month ago. And this other one will be available on our website. Probably more than a month ago. Uh, th yeah, this <laughs> is the, our release for our Wave and Water, uh, not Wave and Water, our re regular <laughs> video library class. Yeah. Video lesson library class was the coffee mill, right? That's a gorgeous got, one. Isn't that pretty? That's kind of cool. And Thursday, every Thursday, our members get a new video. And um, that one is going to be... This week. This, this week, uh, starting Thursday, this will be our newest video for our cl class. But zoom out a little, would you? Uh, I got the button. Zoom out a little. Yeah. Let's just get this, this thing out of the way. Zoom yeah. out a little. This will be our... Uh, this will be our um, Members painting for, uh, for, for Ginger Cook Live Jock Gallery for Thursday because every week we do something else. This is a two cookie lesson, so it's really fun and easy to do. But you notice the techniques of, of this, that in this right now, look at the same techniques on the roof in this barn. And believe it or not, even on this painting that we did tonight, even though I'm going to redo it, probably have to redo this completely by tomorrow. In fact, I might even start over again now that I've got this much and say, this is what I've got. What could I do differently? Oh, I can hardly wait. They're asking so, for another uh, fly on the wall episode. When will episode three be airing? Anytime soon? Well, you know That'll what? That'll be the tangerine one. That will be the tangerine. We have to finish the tangerine. We'll do another fly on the wall episode we have another, for sure. We, we already had another one designed, ready to go for the next the, the problem that we had, you know, is that last week, as you remember, I had my eye surgery and I couldn't see anything. <laughs> I tried to even answer. I tried to answer, you know, do the, uh, the, the art, art coaching and I couldn't see the cursor to type. I mean, it's terrible, and even tonight it's a little challenging to see with these sunglasses on, but tomorrow I'll be able to have them off, Yeah. so that'll be good, too. I'll be able to have these stupid sunglasses off. I'll be able to see a little better. So the but best thing we can tell you about the fly in the wall is make sure you subscribe and make sure you have the alarm set. Typically, they're on Thursday or Friday, typically, but we can't say when or where for sure because... As you know, our day got screwed up today playing with the server our day. That, you know, it wasn't yeah. in our plan. So things come up. So we're not yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we don't know. I mean, you know, we, yeah, we, John was on, you know, John was really talking to that, you know, those people with the server made me absolutely crazy. You know, <laughs> I mean, who, well, let's not go into that. But I mean, I just think most <laughs> common sense says you do that stuff at two in the morning and you got a problem, you email us, right? Like, not that they didn't, but still. We, we well, we didn't have the problem at 2 in the morning. It was in the afternoon where everybody gets up and starts piling onto our server. And my good friend Dave was in the middle of doing a painting <laughs> for the Rotary Club, and he has to have it done this weekend. He calls up and says, where's my lesson? Where's my lesson? We're, going, We're sorry, Dave. So he's coming over. When's he coming? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> he's coming over tomorrow to finish it. <laughs> That's right. He's coming over tomorrow so to finish it. So I don't know when you're going to plan on getting that thing done. You're going to have a busy day tomorrow. I'm going to have a busy day tomorrow because, I'm trust me, I'm going to do something different on this thing. Now, I just want you to see this because we dried everything. Now, watch. I just want you to see something. I, I'm not saying I won't put it back, but look. Because we dried it. You erased it. You can erase it. That is just so cool. And that's what you can do with acrylics. 
So again, don't get caught up in doing some great big picture until you've got your design. Get it small, get it down, know your design. I mean, I mean I'm you may do two or three of these small ones before you're really happy, or you may end up just painting over it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Now look what happens what when we took those trees out. I like those trees. But I, what if, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm saying you did, but I didn't like them because it got very busy. Does that make sense? Not to me. But then, but because I dried everything, I can put them back. It's a save as kind of thing, right? I, I but you have to do that before it dries. Theoretically. You have to dry it. You have no, to you have to dry the layer below it. But yeah. if you put something on, you, you, you can't wait till tomorrow and say you don't like it tomorrow. Uh, no. No. But, you know, I mean, how hard would it be really to be put two trees back? For I me, it would be impossible. Well, I mean, you, you just put them back, right? I'm just saying. You would yeah. just put them back. But I'm just saying that this is, the, this is what I'm talking about. If you did, um, uh, what, what could you do? Could you just, um, oh, I'm going to have fun with this. I've got some ideas now how we might change this or do something different with this. And it's, um, it'll be fun. We'll see. Well, so we'll see, what we'll, happens. we'll see this tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow, and I'll give you the big stuff. So we'll give you the big reveal. What Ginger's doing the to do with it? Big reveal. The big reveal, you guys. This was fun. Thanks very much. Listen, um, be sure to uh, write us and tell us. You know, ask us your questions. And um, if we don't get them answered on the show, you can always email, email us at gingercooklive.gallery, and I will answer your question on the show. Good thing to know, right? Good thing to know. All right, so that's that's if you guys, if you, those of you who are interested in doing that, remember, it's just uh, if you want to just do this particular painting, which is 11 by 14, you can just sign up for a week and do it. That's kind of cool. Sign up for a week for just 9.95 and do it. You, you, know, you don't have, if, and then if you have time, you can just whip in all all other lessons. And those of you who signed up today and lost today, we'll give you an extra day. By the way, so just remind week. us. Just remind us. We'll give you another day. <laughs> We're sorry you lost today. All right. All right, Gabby. Thanks for uh, joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. This concludes another exciting episode of Learn to Paint Tuesday with Ginger. Sammy, thank you once again for your support, buddy. You're always there helping us out. And good night from Houston, Texas. Good night, Ginger. Good night, John. Good night, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs>